Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or afternoon it is, isn't it? Good morning, Madam Chair. Hi. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Um, we got a quorum seated, everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, we have a few comments from Mr. Pengree on some agenda items. Okay, just uh, welcome everybody uh, from a staff perspective. If you can, please, if anybody does wish to speak to any of the items or wants to speak to anything that's not on the agenda, please do fill out a blue card. It's in the back of the room and just make sure that it gets up here to me in the front so we can uh, move forward at the appropriate time. Oh, great, thank you. Uh, move forward at the appropriate time. Uh, Madam Chair, there are a couple of items to read into the record under agenda modifications if I could. Uh, having been distributed electronically prior to the meeting or here uh, in hard uh, format at the meeting are the following. There is a revision to agenda item number two which has to do with the uh, CAFR. There is the CAFR document itself that has been distributed. There is a summary of the Citizen Advisory Committee meeting and the Technical Coordinating Committee meeting that has been distributed. There is supplemental information at the table in hard copy format related to agenda item number six, which is the status report on Walgreens. Uh, some additional feedback that we have received from the corporate office. I think that uh, we'll cover it in a presentation, but you might find it informational. Uh, we have supplemental information on item number 11, which is the prioritization. The supplemental information was a timeline uh, related to the various steps in regards to how we got here. Just a little bit more detail there. Uh, you have an updated resolution for your qualified targeted industry item, which is item number eight. And finally, there's a modification for item number nine, having to do with the slate of candidates for uh, the Economic Vitality Competitiveness Committee um, Council. Um, the Big Bend Minority Chamber has a designated seat. We had inadvertently uh, placed Antonia Smith on the, on the slate. Uh, BBMC would like Sean Pittman to be their representative. That's the only noted modification at this point in time. Those constitute the agenda modifications. Uh, and with that, Madam Chair, it's in posture for further action. Okay, thank you. Uh, and also just for the people who are here in the audience to speak, we will have non-agended item speakers at the end of the meeting, but as we go through the agenda, we'll call for speakers on each each item just prior to when we have a discussion on it. So you'll be able to hear an order of, of the topics that you want to talk about. Okay, and we have uh, to start several informational presentations which are not necessarily going to be voted on or probably not unless something comes up. And uh, Mr. Pengree? Yes, thank you. So the two informational items, uh, both will be coming back to you commissioners at the second and final public hearing. They relate to the budget. Uh, the budget is shaping up healthily. We're able to speak to it, but in an uh, uh, you know, effort of time management, uh, we have a presentation ready, but we're presenting those as informational documents for your review uh, over the, the weeks ahead. Uh, we have three actual presentations, the first of which uh, is the Citizen Advisory Committee Chairman's Report. Uh, Chairman Stux sends his regards. Vice Chair Hugh Tomlinson, I believe, has a few words uh, to go over some of the actions at the recent CAC meeting. And I think we have uh, kind of a dual report, is that correct? That uh, we, we have one speaker, uh, Mr. Thomas, that Mr. may wish Thomas. to give some words after this report. After the report, okay. Mr. Tomlinson, thank you. Thank you. I uh, must admit I do not know the, understand the full scope of the power of this committee, but if you have any influence on the weather, I think we're all ready for some sunshine uh, in Tallahassee. Uh, I'm Hugh Tomlinson. I am the vice chair of the Blueprint Intergovernmental Agency Citizens Advisory Committee. I fill that seat um, for NEBA, their permanent seat on the Citizens Advisory Committee. And I had the distinct honor to sit in as the chair of the committee on June 8th meeting when our committee chair, Alan Stux, was not available. Likewise, it's my privilege uh, to update you guys today uh, regarding our meeting on the 8th, the discussions and actions that took place. Um, First off, we received a great deal of information uh, at the meeting. Uh, the following, uh, it says, I've got here notes of, of course, that we reviewed the draft of the fiscal year 2018 Blueprint Intergovernmental Agency 
operating budget as well as the net sales tax allocation plan. They were provided in our packets. We didn't take any actions on those as they were gonna be uh, completed and amended and presented in our September's meeting. Uh, information uh, on a request for a resolution supporting the project campus as a qualified target industry. And we'll talk about that. We did take action regarding that. I will say that the Citizens Advisory Committee was very encouraged and excited about the, op the opportunity and prospects of Project Campus. Uh, we're certain that uh, uh, the OEV and this committee will bring it to uh, bring it home for the community, and we hope we can find some more uh, industry and, and other businesses that we can bring uh, under under like terms. Uh, the consent items were presented for, to us as well, five items, which included minutes, included uh, the comprehensive annual financial report that was presented to us uh, with some modifications and the status of some blueprint infrastructure, infrastructure projects, some shade analysis that was uh, reports that were done for Cascades Trail and also a report on how the Office of Economic Vitality was doing uh, with, with, uh, with their work. Um, following the consent items, uh, we had some discussion, much of which related to some committee structure uh, for which this IA committee perhaps may take up this afternoon uh, regarding three committees of Economic Vitality Leadership Council, Economic Vitality Competitiveness Committee, and the Competitive Projects Cabinet. You get A plus for tongue twisters. And uh, uh, as chair, I took a point of privilege uh, before Mr. Lattimore presented on these committees to point out that while it was a well-considered and thought out list with some qualified folks, uh, that it was an incomplete list, uh, in my opinion, uh, as um, 33 presented did not include the per a permanent seat for NEBA, which is Network of Entrepreneurs and Business Advocates, a 25-year-old business organization in town that represents about 375 business owners and professionals in town. Uh, and so I, I, I've made a great pitch that we absolutely needed to be uh, involved in any committee that was called the Economic Vitality Competitiveness Committee and that uh, the citizens of this community certainly deserve to have the brain trust of NEBA uh, on, involved on any committee that's talking about how to bring businesses and be competitive and how to create economic vitality in, Tala in Tallahassee and in our community. Most of you have been before our uh, network of entrepreneurial membership and you certainly know that we are a engaged and spirited uh, uh, group of business owners uh, for this community um, and we think we should certainly have a, uh, a seat. The seats for, the, the, for this committee is three year terms with up to an additional year which means that some of these members would be there for four years and so without putting a permanent seat for NEBA now it's likely not to happen uh, certainly in any short term. And every so business organization. Excuse me, yes. Mr. Thomason. Uh, we, have, we will be taking this up in item nine. All of us will have a discussion of it. So we appreciate your comments. I mean, I know those are your personal privilege at your uh, Citizens Advisory Committee, but we appreciate that. But right now, uh, we're not gonna be discussing that until we get to item nine. Okay, well, I will just go on to say that during the general business portion, after Mr. Lattimore's presentation of, uh, of, the, three, of the three committees, we took votes on steps one and two. Step one being the resolution to create the committee, the committees as outlined, that passed unanimously. And the second step, which was to uh, approve the presented slate of appointments, which was done by staff, uh, that one uh, was voted on. And uh, I, as vice chair, uh, went on record as voting no only because it was an incomplete list without NEBA involved. Uh, I will just finally close with that portion to say that Mr. Pendergree did tell me after the meeting that he would not stand in the way, staff would not be standing in the way if this body wanted to include NEBA. When, when we get to that item, I think we, there will be a discussion of whether we Thank want to you. make some changes on that. Uh, finally, we considered, uh, we were presented the proposed uh, grading scale or scoring scale 
for the uh, prioritization for the 11 uh, community, uh, smaller community blueprint, blueprint promise uh, projects um, that this body had asked the OEV to come up with a way to, to judge um, which ones, how to prioritize them. And so we did look at the scoring, the scoring uh, and voted on it and uh, accepted their, uh, their recommendations. And we also got reports, status reports, on many projects, including the Northeast Gateway, Wilani Boulevard, Dove Pond, Regional Stormwater Facilities. And uh, the Citizens Advisory Count, Count Committee did authorize this body, uh, in fact, the Intergovernmental Management Committee, to uh, execute the draft that was presented to us um, to join with the Canopy Community Development District Joint Project Agreement. And we kind of just went over the updates on the projects and we got to hear some great information and, uh, and we certainly adjour adjourned after that. And we appreciate your time. Okay, thank you very much. I think everybody on the committee has a copy of the votes of the Citizens Advisory Committee. Okay, next up, next up I think we have a Blueprint Project update and uh, Charles Hargraves, are you doing? Yes, ma'am. At that time? Commissioners, as you're aware, this is another shining example of the holistic approach uh, to addressing our community's transportation, transportation needs while protecting the environment and creating, uh, creating added recreational opportunities. And that's the Capital Circle Northwest Southwest project. It's our N2 project. Uh, we've got a couple slides there uh, up on the uh, presentation the slide the first photo there shows part of the roadway pr uh, project but the other one that we really think is very impressive is what will become the Debbie Lightsey Nature Preserve um, you see several large stormwater facilities there uh, those are the efforts that Blueprint and the Department of Transportation has taken to protect the environment in this area um, currently uh, the big push in construction is finalizing the final striping on the project with thermoplastic uh, stripes. Uh, those activities are being hampered a little bit, and so with a little bit of assistance from Mother Nature, we hope to complete this project by the end of June uh, or the first week in July. Uh, staff is working to identify a ribbon cutting date uh, sometime in July. Uh, as soon as we have that date nailed down, we'll. Uh, provide that to you and uh, look forward to having everybody come out and celebrate the completion of this great project. I just, can I make a quick should, comment? Certainly. If you haven't sure. been on this road system yet, it is just, I mean, not only is it efficient, but the landscaping on it and the, um, the, the side roads that were put, just all of it, it's just a fabulous job. And I know it took longer than any of us thought it would, but it turned out great. So thank you for all your hard work. Commissioner, uh, it, it is an outstanding project. When you look at it, it's hard to realize that uh, just a few years ago, it was a two-lane road. Mm -hmm. um, with the regards to Capital Cascades Trail Segment 3, uh, we, are com um, complete, we have com since completing uh, Segment 3B and 3C, which is the Adams to Pinellas portion of the project, we wanted to make everybody aware of the great recognition that the project received. We were awarded um, the multifunctional project of the year by the Big Bend chapter of the American Public Works Association and the transportation project of the year by the Florida chapter of APWA. Um, both of those are significant awards and are really attributed to the success of the project. Uh, these awards were joint awards with the city of Tallahassee and their uh, FAMU Way extension project. So both the city and Blueprint received those awards. Uh, also, as far as awards go in this segment, uh, Cascades Crossing, which included the pedestrian bridge over North Monroe, received, received a Project of the Year award for the structure uh, from the ben, Big Bend uh, chapter of APWA. We just wanted to make sure that y'all were aware of the awards that the projects that you're directing and, and funding are receiving. Where do I go and take the, receive the trophy at? What do you do? They're in my office and you, yes, sir. Well, it's going to be rotating, Commissioner Our Proctor. Office. Not mine personally. <laughs>
So uh, with Capital Cascades Trail Segment 3D, which is Pinellas to Gamble Street, uh, construction began in, uh, in April, and we expect the project to be complete in November of 2018. Uh, M. Inc. is proceeding with that work and doing a great job. Uh, Blueprint has also begun the acquisition of properties for the next segment, which is from Gamble Street to the Central Drainage Ditch, and we hope to have all the properties acquired uh, by the summer of 2018, and that will include the properties uh, that we're acquiring on behalf of the city for their Family Way um, Phase 3. So moving on to Franklin Boulevard, uh, recently, there's been some public inquiries as to the status of the depression at Franklin Boulevard and Park Avenue. Uh, since the depression originally formed, uh, Blueprint in close communication with Leon County has worked to ascertain the cause and identify a solution. Uh, that process included an analysis of the entire Franklin Boulevard corridor where we actually did borings and GPR analysis to actually look under the pavement and see what was going on. Um, that has taken a, a considerable amount of time, but, but working with the designer, the contract team, the CEI, and the county, we believe that we have a plan in place to repair it and hope to begin that within the next 30 days and to be complete by the end of the summer. Does it have a price tag, Madam Chair, if I may ask? At this time, I do not have that information, but I'm happy to report that back once we get to that. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Um, yes, okay. okay, and then the last thing was on the uh, Smoky Hollow. We wanted to make you aware that the commemoration site and um, the Smoky Hollow Historic American Landscape Survey were recently given historic preservation awards by the Tallahassee Trust for Historic Preservation. Uh, members of our Smoky Hollow CA, uh, Citizens Advisory Committee joined the Blueprint team in accepting those awards at a ceremony last month. So that's uh, pretty good step in the right direction. Yes, it does. Is that it? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good. Uh, all right. Next up, we have the uh, report on project updates by Al Latimer of the Office of Economic Vitality. Commissioners, Mayor, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, first of all, let me draw your attention to the um, stakeholder bulletin that is in front of you. Uh, we prepared a first run copy for you today. Uh, full print run will be uh, out by the end of the week. Um, it will go out tomorrow um, uh, to our newsletter audience uh, of about 850 subscribers. Okay. So, uh, as we continue to implement the strategic plan, I want to highlight uh, some of the good work your OEV team is doing. And I'd be remiss if I didn't, um, um, uh, where I can, uh, where I have the opportunity to give accolades to the team. Uh, last night, uh, we witnessed the uh, NBA uh, championship finals, uh, and the best team in the NF, uh, excuse me, in the NBA won. And uh, I got to tell you, you you have got a great OEV team, and uh, and I'm I am purely bragging on them because uh, at the end of this report, I think you're going to see that they're doing outstanding work. Um, okay, so. Our research and business analytics uh, unit continues to post uh, economic information to our online database, uh, online data center, and produce our quarterly economic dashboard report, which looks like uh, that um, on the slide there. Uh, the uh, third quarter report is not due out until July, uh, but however, we've pulled together some uh, interim data points for you to take a look at. Um, the um, uh, on the employment side, you can see that there's good news there. Uh, 500, uh, excuse me, 5,850 jobs uh, for the first quarter of uh, 2017. Uh, that's an average number. Uh, on the, the unemployment rate looks wonderful at 3.6. Uh, and one last number I'll mention is the 3.3 uh, um, um, percent of um, um, sale, taxable sales. Okay, so here's a profile of the business activity that we've been involved in uh, since the beginning of the fiscal year. 
Uh, we're currently uh, managing, um, um, or excuse me, we currently have a, um, a project, a list of uh, 13 active pro uh, projects. Uh, a number that um, you can expect to get appreciably larger as we continue to ramp up operations. Uh, the first chart there um, is simply a scorecard, our wins, our losses, our prospects. The last chart um, shows that we've been working with businesses in six industry groups. And if we're successful in, in, in uh, landing those projects, uh, we will be successful in uh, diversifying our economic base. So. The greatest opportunity for future job growth, of course, is um, a, uh, supporting our existing businesses. And there's no better way to illustrate this fact than by pointing out its size and impact. Uh, we have uh, over 8,000 private uh, businesses here in uh, Tallahassee Leon County, 100,000 employees, and over $4 billion in annual payroll. I'd say that's uh, size and impact. Um, the chart to your upper right indicates that in 2015, private sector employment started to outplace uh, government sector employment, which is uh, on the uh, lower right-hand company. Uh, and this is just more reason uh, that we should be working with um, uh, our existing businesses to mine future uh, job growth opportunities. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing. Capital Loop is our business retention program and focuses um, on meeting with local businesses to identify challenges they may be facing, opportunities that they have, um, and then determining how we can help them in either case. Um, we've, uh, we've had 25 business consultations uh, this year. We've had 35 engagements, which means we've uh, um, sat down, talked to businesses face-to-face -face, uh, on multiple occasions. Um, and then we've generated two project leads. Again, proof that uh, talking to our um, uh, existing businesses uh, yields future job growth opportunities. Our MWSBE uh, unit is now consolidated and streamlined. And among the long list of assignments they are working on, staff is directly engaged with developers uh, on projects like the Standard and Cassanias to increase uh, MWSB participation opportunities. So far uh, this year, our certifications are up an impressive 24%, uh, and our recertifications are up 26%. That's pretty strong medicine there. Um, also, want to let you know that uh, we have finalized um, the uh, contract for the disparity study, and we're moving full steam ahead on that project. Okay, so. Uh, we are working with the uh, Tallahassee International Airport to identify opportunities. Um, and uh, earlier this year, uh, we came across an opportunity with Volkswagen and uh, put the consultant directly in touch with uh, Chris Curry, the airport director, who responded to the proposal. Unfortunately, uh, we were not awarded the opportunity, but uh, OEV is in a constant search for business development opportunities for uh, the airport. We are also uh, supporting, or also have been supporting, and continue to support uh, the airport's efforts to uh, be designated as a foreign trade zone. Uh, a decision on the uh, trade zone application is expected uh, within the next six months. I want to also let you know that uh, we are collaborating across county lines on projects that are um, mutual, uh, to our mutual and common benefit. Two examples would be the Gulf to Gadsden freight logistics zone that strengthens our intermodal, uh, intermodal connections in the region and will allow funding prioritization for projects like rail, roads, airports, and dredging. Uh, we're also collaborating right now on a uh, foreign direct investment opportunity to bring private equity uh, from outside the United States uh, into, um, you know, into uh, Florida to invest in businesses in our region. While none of us want to see our local businesses close uh, or leave the area, the reality is that it sometimes happens. When it does, uh, you can be assured that uh, your OEB team will show up with a um, tactical response strategy uh, to address the situation. Um, in front of you, you have a letter um, uh, that uh, is a response to a letter I wrote to uh, Walgreens um, um, trying to get them to reconsider the closure of the um, um, South, Ma South Monroe Magnolia store. 
and uh, um, there are just some key points in that letter uh, that I think we'll discuss when we get to tab six, but um, I want to give one additional note that um, um, uh, will supplement your information there, and that is that uh, Big Bend Cares, which will open in October, will provide um, a pharmacy service for the residents in the area. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, yes, thank and, you. and just a, a, a key word by way of introduction for both of these updates to uh, commissioners. Uh, we have a lot of information on the consent agenda, and we have a lot, as you can see clearly from the status reports and the updates, there's a tremendous amount of activity that's been done both at Blueprint and in the Office of Economic Vitality. The opportunity that we had right here at the front in presentations was to call out some of the, the highlights in terms of our productivity, and also, such as the case for this tactical response team, some of the challenges and how we sought to address them. So the hope is to have some of that discussion here that might uh, uh, forestall the need to f pull an item from consent. With that in mind and, and acknowledging um, uh, the letter that was received for the good outreach that was done, uh, just a little bit more information. We've been working with uh, the county's contract broker uh, to try and ascertain what is existing. Now that we've got this word from Walgreens that, yep, they're, 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 that ship has sailed for them, what's going to happen with that location? Um, you know, before Big Ben, Big Ben Cares Care Point uh, facility comes online and, and period. Uh, the information that I have today is that that is covered by Walgreens for the next seven years. Uh, they are hiring and it's a, it's a national um, hire uh, that Walgreens does. They have a national broker. They're getting a you know, brokerage up, but there's a number of different actors that are looking to see what the options are. Um, you know, for that site to put it back in into play. Of course, Walgreens commits to maintaining the property, and and that's not necessarily yeah, that's a minimum. <laughs> we're, we're seeing how it can can remain a, a key component of the economic vitality of our South Side. So, as more information is available, know that we're pushing it, uh, and know that we're going to continue to uh, to work this issue uh, inclusively um, towards solution. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that a little bit. Uh, additional intelligence. Commissioner Richardson. Madam Chair, thank you, Madam Chair, and <coughs> Ben and Al. I certainly do appreciate all the good work that um, that the OEV has done, and and certainly will be doing in the future. But you know, I I sat here and um, just jotted down. I mean, these are two high-profile closings that have occurred recently uh, on the south side of town: the Winn Dixie and then the Walgreens. But over the years, there have been many others. Um, the Ray Gordon brake service closed on South Monroe. Next to it was a uh, Mr. Transmission closed. Uh, many of the businesses in the Baker's, uh, what used to be the Baker's Pharmacy, I guess they still own the property. Many of those businesses, I rode through there the other day. I think there may be one functioning business in that plaza now, for whatever reasons. Um, there was a Hispanic grocery store on South Monroe. It's closed. The, um, uh, the business that sold uh, comic books on South Monroe. It, those, were, those were closings. They weren't as high profile as Winn-Dixie and Walgreens, but there are closings nonetheless. And so it's been very troubling to me as I ride around the south side of this community uh, and I see this happening. Uh, and I think we, we have to have a sense of urgency about this thing now, uh, especially with those two large chains closing, uh, and what we can do uh, to develop an action plan for addressing these issues uh, immediately. Uh, these are jobs lost, these are families impacted, uh, you know, it, 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 in terms of a, a destination, uh, many of those those businesses that are gone now are not destination points anymore. And so there there has to be a, a sense of urgency now on, on what's happening. Uh, these two certainly have brought to light uh, what's been happening over the years because the others have been kind of small mom and pop operations and we haven't paid much attention. And I'm sure this is not an exhaustive list. I can tell you if you talk to other folk, they could probably add uh, to this list. And at the same time, I have to admit, there have been some 
businesses that have come into the area, the O'Reilly's, Auto Parts, the AutoZone, uh, of course, CarePoint now that's developing. Uh, so it's not necessarily becoming um, uh, an economic development desert, if you will, but more can be done. Uh, and I think we need to have a comprehensive action plan. I know some of it has to do so with some of the conversation that we've had about improving the infrastructure. That has a lot to do with it. Uh, but, but making the, the area, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you all do that. That's what you get paid to do, you're the experts. But there has got to be a sense of urgency in all of these business closings uh, in, on that side of town when obviously there, there is, I mean, if that Walgreens was there for 22 years, uh, there is a customer base that supports that and needs that kind of service in the community. And so I would like to see us put a little more emphasis uh, on developing a master plan for how we can begin to address uh, economic development in this area. And I know we'll, we'll have an opportunity to talk some about that when we get to the prioritization of projects because that will have a lot to do with it as well in terms of, in, in, uh, in terms of uh, addressing some of the infrastructure issues uh, that will help spur that development as well. Thank, Thank you. you, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Scott Maddox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, briefly, uh, while I, I share, of course, the uh, concerns of, of my good friend, Commissioner Richardson, I disagree as to the approach. So businesses continue to fail and new businesses continue to come in throughout our community and have done so since time immemorial. Uh, the Market Square area has lost about two thirds of the businesses that were there. Old Town, Gastro uh, Sidecar, there's been several of them there. Capital Circle Northeast, CJ's, that area closed and have not reopened. Most of West Tennessee Street has yeah, businesses after businesses have closed and not reopened and new businesses come in. When I think that sometimes we can do more harm than good when government attempts to tell the free market or to prop up the free market by its actions. It reminds me of the, uh, the movie Back to the Future and if you did something when they were in the past and then you look, go fast forward and it messed up something in the future. It is foreseeable when you spend over $200,000 for interior renovations through the CRA for a Piggly Wiggly that a Winn-Dixie within a stone's throw is going to go out of business. That is foreseeable. You gave a competitive advantage to a business in the same area that does the exact same thing as the other business. It's foreseeable that that would happen. So to me, before we come back with a plan to basically pick winners and losers in the free market system, I think we need to have the overall ideological discussion before we move forward. Thank you. Commissioner Dozier. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I appreciate the discussion. Um, I think a lot of our different work, whether it's housing or CRA or others, we kind of hit somewhere in the middle um, so I look forward to continuing those discussions and the philosophical points on both sides. Um, I do think there are some things that we can do well to support businesses. You all, Al, you've shown, coming back to your report here, you've shown a lot of those types of activities, really appreciate it for an organization that's only a year and a couple months old, right? Um, and I think that, I, I wanna make one comment and then I had one question. Um, I recently joined the Appalachia Regional Council Planning Board, um, appointed by the County Commission, and Commissioner Miller is there representing the city. Really appreciate you all from OAV, Christina, others showing up at those meetings. I think it is noted by the members, and there's a lot more focus on regional economic development. To see that mentioned here is something that, frankly, I don't think I've seen in our economic discussions in the past from the foreign trade zone, which is really exciting. Uh, Dan Fox, other companies have mentioned this, those, you know, connected to innovation parks. So um, I'm hearing a lot of chatter about that. And I think the regional impact um, is, we have the potential to do something right now that we have not seen in our area in a long time. And there's also more connection between us and Gulf County in the Appalachian region be because of 
the strength of some of the other organizations surrounding us. So I think this is the right time and really appreciate you all and the engagements you've shown in that and the work you've done there. The question I had was about this 24% jump in the certifications, um, minority and women owned businesses. Um, I am thrilled by that number and I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts right now about why we've seen that jump? Is there better communication? Is there more engagement? Do people, are people more aware of this at this time? Um, just wondering if there's any lessons learned or if that information may come at a later date. Um, absolutely. Um, I think what you're seeing is a um, uh, definitely more engagement. Uh, I think what you're seeing is ownership. Um, you know, Daryl uh, Jones and his team, uh, they meet regularly and they talk about uh, creative ideas, new creative ideas. They've created um, uh, a number of new programs, outreach programs. One of those is monthly roundups, which are educational opportunities provided to uh, businesses um, to help get them educated and trained about opportunities. Um, it's um, quite honestly just being promoted, uh, nonstop promoter, promoting the program everywhere. It's about our capital loop program. Um, uh, you know, uh, helping uh, provide a platform where that uh, information about our MWSB program can get into the information flow about normal businesses. So it, it's all of that and more. Um, so. Th th thank you. Um, I'm not surprised at all, and I appreciate hearing that. I think um, when we had our committee uh, the, on the county side before um, starting the disparages study with um, the city, it. Um, in OED, it was really about how to how do we create more businesses, and I think um, you all are showing the, that engagement. Daryl, thank you and your team for that um, is really happening. So I'm thank excited you. about it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Proctor. I'd like to thank the staff for um, their engagement with Walgreens. Uh, this has been a very uh, this. This issue has uh, evoked strong public response to the district commissioner of that area for the county. And in looking at the letter that was addressed to Mr. Latimer, um, it's very difficult that Walgreens would choose this store to be among its 200 stores across the country to close. And though they told you, Mr. Latimer, that they've struggled to be profitable since they're open um, and there has been a reduction in prescription volume and that there has been high costs to maintain the location. Well, I, I mean, a lot of businesses struggle to be profitable. I mean, struggle is involved in making a profit. So I'm, I'm, I'm not persuaded by this answer. I can't think of a business anywhere that doesn't have a struggle. Um, and who said that to earn a profit, one had to be struggle free? I believe the metrics that ought to have been regarded here, and this is when we have to think of ourselves beyond who makes a profit and profit, is the vulnerability of this particular area compared to the other 10 stores. I'm for Walgreens making a profit, but I'm also for businesses recognizing the locale. And this census tract probably has more people with diabetes and um, all kinds of conditions than any uh, census tract in the community. It's, it's in the one, two, or three. And to think that they're distributing legal drugs at that site, they are more that store means more to that area, perchance, than any of the other Walgreens and their locales to the people there. People walk there, uh, students go there, uh, elderly people there, folk who ride the bus there. This is a site for Tallahassee's most vulnerable audiences, okay? And this is why this site you can't measure it fully just alone in terms of their struggle to be profitable. 
That's what should be conveyed to this Walgreens. I like to see you go back, Mr. Latimer, and convey that. This is a vulnerable site. This is not across the street from the hospital. This is across the street from the university, up the street from the projects, across the street from South City. That's where this is. And we're asking Walgreens to be a community partner that factors more than their profits there. And um, this site is profitable. It's been down there, as Commissioner Richardson said, two decades. And they went down there uh, not making money. That's what they do. And another tangible is that this site is the closest pharmacy to the Florida a and University uh, College of Pharmacy, which produces 60% of the nation's black pharmacists. It, 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 it almost takes away a, um, um, God, I think a pillar. It's the closest site that students across the street who major in pharmacy, it's the closest site, you see? So its value is more than just their struggle to remain profitable. And I'd just like, if, 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 if you would, Mr. Latimer, because it wrote to you to convey that to them. It's not too late. Walgreens has 8,300 stores, but this particular store has a lot of meaning that, that I hope that you would convey um, for, for me. And I appreciate the effort that has gone forward then by you and your staff. Thank you. If I could just uh, draw your attention to, we, we have one more slide, uh, and that is um, the ACE, um, uh, com the American Competitiveness Change uh, Tour. It is uh, uh, coming to town uh, December 3rd to the 9th, um, 2017. And um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to uh, let you uh, glance at the slide there for a moment. Information on it is in your packet. And um, thank you for the opportunity. I'm glad to have that. Thank you, Mr. Latimer. Uh, we have six items on consent, and I think that uh, you had a comment or two on, we had a few comments on a couple of them before yeah. we start out. Just, just, uh, just a couple, uh, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity. We're going to, yeah, obviously, we'll listen to feedback from this meeting, but hopefully that format will work uh, as we have our updates and status reports on consent. Uh, but, but are able to, to, to sort of highlight, focus upon, and have a little bit of discussion on, on some good opportunities and challenges that we're facing. I do want to echo and, and give it its due. The, uh, the ACE, uh, that American uh, Competitiveness Exchange, that is a very big deal. Um, and to toot our horn just a little bit, which uh, we, we're very honest brokers about uh, everything going on in our capital community, the opportunities and the challenges. But make no mistake, this is an exemplar of the world's best coming to our community to learn best practices and to see very closely what we do well. It was highly competitive. Florida put together a team which we helped lead and we won it. So we're gonna, we're gonna have a, a wonderful program uh, coming up later this fall. So thank you for that. And uh, I, I believe you are in a good posture for uh, your consent items, Move Madam Chair. consent, Madam Chair. Motion's been moved with consent and seconded. Without opposition, all in favor of moving consent items? Aye. 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 Opposed, no. Consent passes. Our first uh, general business is uh, election of a new vice chairman. Madam yes. Chair, I'd like Mr. to um, place in nomination for that um, position my colleague, uh, Commissioner Curtis Richardson. So I second that. Well, that's fast. No signs, no discussion. <laughs> You have to accept that. Thank you. Are I there any other? campaign speech, so. <laughs> any other speech. motions? <laughs> My <laughs> fellow Tallahassee. For vice chair. Oh, oh. Okay, maybe way. we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all go around the room and make a comment. <laughs> okay. Be laudatory. <laughs> we could be laudatory. Uh, all in favor, the motion has been made and seconded for Commissioner Richardson to be vice chair, which means next year you're chair. So all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, nay. I just want to say for the record, in case anybody wants to join me, he's amazing, he's great. It's awesome to sit next to you. 
I like yeah, his hair. Can we go around the room and maybe say something nice about everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say something We have to sing hands and nice sing about kumbaya. Commissioner Deloge, all, Deloge, <laughs> all your hard kumbaya. work at the National Association of Counties, I just want to thank I you. I knew we would not get Great through this meeting you. without someone. this meeting so well, Madam control, Chair. Please. <laughs> please. How can Honor you and your really kids? <laughs> Honor to be in I was hoping someone would say something about me today. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along to... <laughs> Uh, under general business, item number eight is uh, res a resolution supporting Project Campus as a qualified target industry. I think we have a presentation on that. Yes, we, uh, yes we do, Madam Chair. Christina Perez, the Deputy Director over Operations and Engagement. I will have a brief presentation for you. I'd just say uh, we are extremely excited about this competitive project. It's positive economic impact, it's positive job creation, and the ties to a lot of what we do very well, research, et cetera. Christina. Yes, thank you. Um, the approval of this investment, local investment opportunity, comes on the heels of uh, securing 33 new jobs in our community. Over the course of the quarter, we've worked with two companies to open their location here in Tallahassee, so we're very excited to announce that. And one of those locations will be working with um, an announcement and a ribbon cutting with that. And with that, I'd like to um, walk you through here a little bit about Project Campus. This company is under confidentiality per Florida statutes. It's in an advanced manufacturing um, with a focus on research and development. Um, because of that, you're looking at 120 jobs with about 200% above the average um, wage here in town. The average wage in our community is about $39,000, and this company's anticipating on paying their employees about $90,000. They are also bringing a $14 million capital investment into our community, which um, includes $7 million in infrastructure and $7 million equipment. The local investment um, from our side would be about $168,000 for the QTI. This would leverage um, $672,000 in state funding for that, um, for that program. Our local target business program, this is the property tax abatement, over 10 years, um, we're estimating that that would come in about $7,113. The funding for this is being allocated from the investment that the IA and the county and city commissions made um, to kickstart OEV with that $1 million in our business recruitment and investment fund. But most impressively, um, commissioners, is the economic impact. This includes both a direct and indirect analysis. We know that Project Campus will be bringing in about 120 jobs, but those indirect and direct jobs that will be generated because of that are estimated to be about 625 new jobs. We worked closely with the Florida State Center for Economic Forecasting Analysis to do this. Um, our data and analytics team worked with them to pull this together. You're looking at $33.7 million in additional income and wages, and the total economic input uh, output for uh, Project Campus is about $130 million. So with that, staff recommends the approval of the resolution supporting Project Campus as, as the QTI applicant, as well as the 20% match that's required. Again, this is gonna leverage about $672,000 of state funding for their put in, and then as well as approving the targeted business application for Project Campus. And with, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Deloge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nice job, Christina. Can you give me an idea if we go down this path timeline-wise, what the expectations are? We are hoping that to have an announcement by the company in July. We started working with them in February, and this project's been moving really quickly. So um, we have a lot of other state, or both state and local partners at the table, and we appreciate their support in that. And um, we're all hoping for an announcement by early July. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll move option one and two. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded for options one and two. With that, Commissioner Proctor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I, I don't know that much about project, um, the project campus, and forgive me for being the least knowledgeable uh, among us here at the table. And I'm not really clear of their commitments to our local workers are they importing uh, 
uh, people from outside and to bring them here in Tallahassee and to partake of our good life. I mean, what are their commitments and is there a level of uh, commitment to people in our area region? Or they got 120 jobs that they're gonna bus load some people here in Tallahassee to us. And these are not folk who are graduating uh, are matriculating uh, within our community and uh, partaking of the fruits of which this uh, company may bring. May I, I'm asking that as a question. I'll take the, the first uh, crack at that. I think uh, while maintaining confidence for the project, I think it is absolutely fair to state and emphasize that the ability for this company to partner uh, specifically with the FSU, FAMU College of Engineering to tap into that potential that um, trains and is, is coming about from that institution and the, and the talent that exists uh, in that advanced manufacturing field, which is highly specialized, absolutely is a competitive advantage for us. Um, I know that to meet the 120 jobs, this company, like any company, <coughs> will, will find the best talent but we're competing against other areas. We believe that we uh, are where we are today because of the talent that exists here and the talent that we're seeking to, to uh, retain uh, once they leave the, uh, the FAMU FSU College of Engineering and other, other higher education institutions for this kind of a salary and this kind of a job. I haven't seen any letters of support from FSU, uh, FAMU, from the chamber. I'm not, I've not seen anything other than what staff is presenting. I want to get the warm and fuzzies. I want to get hot over this project. I don't see any support, and it's purporting um, to perform at a level of which, other than we supposed to just remain quiet and put a blindfold on and trust staff, and they're sworn to secrecy. And there are things that I, I can't know and you can't disclose, um, but we're to give, I guess, $70,000 per year for the next 10 in support of this. I'm, I'm just curious, is this how we're gonna do business? We got on blindfold and they're partners with uh, FAMU and FSU and we don't have a letter of somebody telling us this is cool? Well, we, we absolutely will adhere with state statutes uh, uh, in terms of maintaining the confidentiality. Uh, you know, that is required. Um, I do think that some of the um, fanfare uh, that is anticipated and, and first of all let me say I do believe you're you're absolutely correct the reason why that isn't uh, happening at this point in time is because this company has requested confidentiality and under state law um, we adhere to it so that isn't being sought that wouldn't be something that normally would come forward at this point in time that acknowledged when the company is able to lift the veil uh, and make the project announcement I do anticipate everything that you've stated will be co-champions um, that will be at that event and then we'll maintain those relationships in that entrepreneurial ecosystem as this company continues to move forward and grow and hire talent from this community. So, so you're committing that their jobs are people from our community and not people coming to our community to partake of these jobs? I'm, uh, <coughs> I think that's fair. I think ultimately they will find the best and the brightest and I think the fact that we're here <coughs> at this point in time is indicative that the best and the brightest exist in this location more than any other. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Deloge, I think you wanted to yeah, make a comment on, on that. Yeah, just on point, Commissioner Proctor. It's a great point. I, I, I testified in front of the legislature a couple of years ago because they were talking about sunsetting this uh, 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 sunshine law, which basically, you know, you've got companies out there that are looking at multiple states and they don't want to tell their employees that they're moving or that they're making a big change until they've locked everything in. And so until the deal gets completely finished and completely cooked, and they put us at a disadvantage before because people would come in and say, I'm, I'm not coming to Florida because, you know, I've got to lay all my cards on the table. I'm talking to Texas, I'm talking to Georgia. And the problem was they didn't want to tell anybody. So this was one of the things the legislature put in place that said, we're going to allow companies that are looking to come to Florida some amount of, 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 of a lack of identity so that they can keep that and it's it gives it gives us a competitive advantage but it's a you're right there is a certain amount of trust with staff here and this is the deal to the degree that they're allowed to, to disclose this at this point 
All right. Good question, though. Yeah. All right, Commissioner Ziffer. Yeah, I um, because there is a somewhat and somewhat high level of secrecy, and yet certain members of the staff seem to know what the issues are. Um, in this particular case, as in others, I think we have to rely on them to be honest with us and suggest whether they think that's going to happen or not. And I think you've done that, Mr. Pingree, and I appreciate that. But the other thing I wanted to add is, and, and, I, and I hope that's the case, but regardless, whoever gets hired, they're going to be spending these 90 some odd thousand dollars a year salaries right here, mm -hmm. which in turn, because the multiplier has other people working as a result of where they eat, where they shop, where they buy clothes, and other things of that nature. But I think your, your point is very valid, Commissioner, but since we seem to be getting some assurances and then we know those dollars are going to be spent here, I'm in favor of it and mm -hmm. we're going to move forward. Uh, before we take a vote, I just wanted to note there are three uh, objectives in the incentives, and that one of them is in the urban high crime area, some tax credits for hiring within uh, the disadvantaged areas. There's a, a requirement that they address hiring vets, and there's also a training uh, piece of that. So whoever this mysterious company is does have some obligations to comply with these three aspects, which I think are real important and speak right to what your, uh, what your question was too. All right, the motion has been made and seconded for uh, approval of this item. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, no. Aye. Motion carries. How many do we have here today? Thank you. So, nine, nine to one, thank you. All right, moving on. We have uh, item nine, and I think we have some uh, speakers. We do. If it's uh, acceptable to you, we'll, we'll present the item uh, here briefly. Um, Madam Chairman, uh, Commissioners, we're very excited to bring forward to you. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion, as you know, uh, starting from the strategic plan. You had resolutions uh, uh, and agreements that came before the City Commission and the County Commission independently. Uh, but the structure for... Uh, entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem expertise uh, to provide that key counsel up to this IA on all of the economic vitality challenges and opportunities that, that we have before us. These resolutions do two things simply. The first thing is they adopt a resolution to lay out each of the three committees, and it's the three that you see on the screen there, the Economic Vitality Leadership Council, the Competitive Projects Cabinet and the Economic Vitality Competitiveness Committee, uh, each with uh, related uh, um, focus and mission, but also each very specific. The second, um, the second purpose of this item is to put forward to you, as is uh, required, a slate of candidates that your IMC has prepared. Uh, OEV has assisted with that. Um, and as noted during the agenda modification, those slates now stand in uh, posture for your, for your action here today. We'll move that forward at some point to uh, what the recommendation is. And yes, Madam, Madam Chair, we do have a series of speakers. Um, do you Madam want me Chair. to read them out, uh, Go ahead. Yep. Uh, Did you want to do the speakers before we? I think we, I would like to hear the speakers before we have a discussion. Forward. Okay, uh, first is Ted Thomas, uh, and next will be Dan Quarello. Uh, three minutes timed uh, at the podium. Thank you, Commissioners. Do you need my address? Please. 1469 Bucure, Tallahassee, Florida, 32308. Um, I come here uh, in support of NEBA, and it's, uh, it's missing from the uh, list of economic vitality Competitiveness Committee. Uh, you'll note in your uh, in your list of I think it's 23 individual organizations that you have the Chamber, Tallahassee Chamber, you have the uh, Big Bend Minority Chamber, and the uh, Capital City Chamber. Tallahassee uh, NEBA is an organization of small businesses, been in and around here for 26 years, represents those small businesses, and we feel strongly that we ought to have a seat at the table, whether you want to put us on the uh, on the list of 23 with uh, um, the Vitality Competitives or the Leadership Committee, and we're okay with either one. Also, if you examine this uh, list even closer, you will note that there are three other organizations who uh, have memberships, uh, like the Tallahassee Board of Realtors, which I have been a member for 29 years, although I'm not here to speak on their behalf, but I will anyway, since they're not here. 
that uh, their me our membership is, 20, is 1,400 people, and yet they are not represented on this committee of, <coughs> of competitors in this committee. Another organization that does a lot in our community as far as the business and economic growth is the Tallahassee Builders Association. They too are not represented on your committee. And last but not least is the Association of uh, Builders um, Contractors, which is the, uh, the, the commercial contractors. They too are not on this list. So I urge the commissions to take a real hard look at this list of 23 people and also the leadership and decide that NEBA definitely does need to be represented. And I would suggest that you might contact the leadership from the other three organizations I spoke to because I'm certain that they would want to have representation. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Thomas. Next speaker. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Don Corello and uh, Curtis Baines will be after Mr. Corello. Hello, I'm Don Quarello. I live at 1425 Colonial Drive. I own Waterworks on the corner of Thomasville Road and Beard Street, and I am the president of the Midtown Merchants Association. And as a member of a local business association, we would certainly appreciate any invitation to participate in any economic council that has potential impact on any local business here in Tallahassee and Leon County. Thank you. Thank you, Don. I want to just add that Waterworks was recently mentioned in a New York Times article as a place to go in Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, I already go there. <laughs> nice. Mr. Curtis Baines, and then the last speaker will be Mr. Barney Bishop. Good evening, uh, Madam Chairman, uh, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the commission, everybody else. I see uh, Hugh back here. I wanted to ask a point of clarification if, if he was talking earlier about shade analysis or shady analysis on his uh, presentation. But my, I understand that what you're trying to do here is put together a list uh, in a quality uh, committee for consideration of these projects. But my concern has to do with the very nature of these economic development programs. I was here to talk about another issue later, but seeing this on the agenda, I couldn't help but to take a moment to speak about it. The problem with these economic development programs is that w people are confused about the causal direction of the influence. They think by developing these economic development programs, putting a lot of money into these economic development programs, they can influence the economy. That's not really the way it works. The success of the economic development programs is a result of the condition of the economy. And that's what you're seeing in all of these other uh, uh, areas out there where we're talking about Walgreens closing and this business closing, that business closing. Those are, those are issues relative to the economy. And your economic development activities are not going to get to that point. I, and I don't take, don't misunderstand me. There are a lot of qualified people you're trying to, to get on these uh, 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 committees, but they're not qualified to make decisions about uh, venture capital and business success and business origination and that kind of thing. And so I continue to be concerned about about spending. $92 million or $90 million, however much we're going to spend uh, with an organization that we haven't finished yet organizing, the one we used to have for 20 years, and that didn't work. So we're going to change the organization, but now we're going to give them $90 million. They don't have any, tracks, uh, any track record. They don't have any success. They don't have any failures. We're talking about, you're talking about quality uh, targeted industry, uh, qualified target industri uh, uh, industries. In the in the few in the past decade, I've seen a number of these come up. I don't think any of them are around now. You can check. I mean, someone can go back and check to see how many of these qualified target industries we try to attract, and how many of them are still here today. And I don't think that there are that many. This is the issue the state was having with their economic development programs, and it's the issue they continue to have with these economic developments. It was that way when I evaluated them 20 years ago. It's the same today, and I don't think you're going to have uh, that much more success with it. What I would like to see you do is take that $90 million and put it in your infrastructure. That's going to have a far more positive effect on your economy than all these little economic development programs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bishop is speaking. next, and we actually have one new Mr. Willis, Jared Willis, after Mr. Bishop. To the left. Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Willis. Jared Willis. Jared Willis, thank you. 
Thank you, Chair Lindley and uh, the rest of the IA committee. I am here, uh, uh, first of all, my address is 1650 Rich Street. It's uh, in Commissioner Proctor's district. But uh, I'm here uh, as president of the Downtown Business Association. You've heard from a lot of the other neighborhood associations, but uh, I, while I am partial to the Downtown Business Association, I, I'm asking for representation for downtown in general. When I looked at the list of people on this, uh, I'll, I'll just call it the EVCC, I'm not gonna say the whole name, but when I looked at the list, I noticed that downtown did not have any specific representation. When you look at uh, a lot of the economic development, a lot of the real estate development, a lot of the initiatives of both the county and the city uh, and the CRA, a lot of these initiatives focus in on taking the growth that we're seeing in Tallahassee, the growth that is kind of spread outward to the edges of Leon County and bringing it back into the center. Uh, and downtown is the center. Uh, Paige Carter-Smith, the uh, DIA director, uh, she's described it as the hub of a, of a wheel with the spokes going to places like Midtown, Southside, Frenchtown, uh, and the Market District. Uh, Gary Jordan's described it as the, uh, the heartbeat of Tallahassee. So uh, what I'm asking for is, is for you to strongly consider having some representative from downtown, whether it's somebody from our organization or our board, whether it's somebody from the DIA or their board or a downtown merchant. Uh, but I would just ask that the heartbeat of Tallahassee be represented on this uh, EC, EVCC. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Wallace. Did, uh, I understand that Commissioner Miller has a con possible conflict you want to address? Uh, as we go forward in these discussions, um, we're gonna get to the point where we approve the names that are set forward at that point, I have a relative who is listed on the list, and so I wanted to have our attorney give me an opinion on that. Obviously, these aren't paid positions, but I just wanted to bring that to light and um, find out if I needed to declare conflict. So instead, in place of our attorney, I've asked the city attorney to come forward and give me an opinion. Do we have uh, Mr. Shelley? Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I've discussed with Commissioner uh, Miller the, the issue, and I don't believe there's any conflict uh, as contemplated under the Florida law here. It's a position uh, by which KCCI has a seat there's no existing contract uh, uh, with KCCI and Blueprint, as I understand it. There is no um, uh, specific, uh, certainly there's no specific gain uh, to the, the relative in this case as a result of this. And KCCI operates as a 501c3 as opposed to a for-profit entity. So I would, uh, certainly uh, say to the group and the audience that uh, Commissioner Miller has no conflict of interest in voting on that, that list. Okay, and that comment, thank you, Mr. Shelley. Ben, did you have a comment on it? Yeah, just, uh, just sort of uh, refocusing, I appreciate uh, commission discussion, potential emotion uh, will be forthcoming. We wanna, we would be remiss at this point in time on behalf of uh, the city manager, county administrator, if we didn't thank all the good folks uh, who are on the list as it stands, the slate of candidates uh, who have stood up in a purely advisory capacity uh, to look out for um, what comes next, uh, looking at uh, you know the historic passage of the sales tax that does include 12% for a responsible, transparent, accountable public investment for economic development and uh, you know, we've taken a lot of great steps in the first year, but the, the, the real fun and the good work and the urgency, is, as you said, Commissioner Richardson, is in front of us. And so uh, we thank everybody for agreeing to put their names forward. We're here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. 
Okay, and uh, we have some discussion, and uh, Commissioner Deloge? Just in light with some of the uh, people that spoke about adding on to the mix, I mean, there's a, you get to a point of no return with the size of a group like this, and these are all going to be public meetings, and we're certainly going to solicit public input. And frankly, I would say that we basically, on an annual basis, we ought to just build some tickler in to review the actual mm -hmm. membership to determine, you know, some people after a year you'll realize they either don't attend, they don't participate, or and we can start to maybe at least have that discussion. Nothing's cast in stone, but we got to start somewhere. And I think this is a reflection of a lot of work and a good representation of our community. Is it perfect? No. But is it a great start? Absolutely. And I think, you know, if we sit here and try and make it perfect, we'll be sitting here a year from now with people coming in, adding to the list, saying, well, what about? And I, and I can appreciate everybody's concern, but the meetings are public. We would solicit public input. So if there are issues that are interested in, please, we'd love to hear from you. So thanks. Yes. Motion. Yes, that's a motion. I'd make I a motion. Would second motion that for? addition. I would second that if it's yeah. a motion. I'm, I make a motion. What is your motion for it? I mean, the terms are three. I think these are three year terms. It's, it's all laid oh. out in terms of the staggering and the terms. Uh, uh, the sta staff recommendations, options one and two. Yeah, I would I'd accept if staff's recommendation that we just do a review. I mean, the reality is we're all grown ups, and you're going to find at the end of a year, and we've all served on boards, somebody hasn't been to a meeting all year. It's a three year term. We send them a nice letter and say, are you really serious about this? We need to, fill, you know, and those are the kind of things uh -huh. that we just do. But but I'm not changing the structure here as much as just saying I'd like to shine a light on it just on an annual basis. And how are we working? How is the makeup working for everybody? Instruction to staff or do you want to um, yeah, that's fine. make a just motion? A, just a, that on an annual basis, we just do kind of a brief review and, you know, and, and like I said, it, it should be fairly obvious to the group how this has worked. Um, but I... I get nervous when you get a group that gets bigger and bigger and bigger on your ability to actually m manage the process and move things forward. So, thank right. you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Nick Maddox and then Mayor Gillum. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, looking over the list, I think we have about 34 people. I don't, I don't really see the problem with maybe adding uh, Neva and uh, downtown. I don't think um, your mic is on, or else you're not. Yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily see the problem with adding Neva uh, in in downtown. I mean, I, the motion as is, I, I can I can agree with that as well. But I I would consider it if if that's the board's pro, I mean the board's will to do so. I, I I would actually ask for the amendment to add those two from the maker of the motion if you would consider. Can I comment? I think we would. It's, I, I would say no. It's no man's land. Okay. There's no stop. It's no place. So be it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay, um, Mayor Gillum and then Commissioner McDonald. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and I shared this with the staff during our briefing yesterday as well. Uh, but I do think that staff will need to codify the roles of each of these three different groups. Uh, I could see a scenario where one group says that decision never came to us because it's our understanding that that decision gets made at a different level. It may be understood amongst us. It may or may not be well understood amongst, amongst each of the groups. And it's my understanding that the reason why we have three different bodies um, is uh, in rapid response situations, you may need to go to one and you can't convene the other. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I just think that we need to be clear on that going in rather than dealing with that scenario later. Uh, and then the other you know, point is I think we have to have to have to have an economic development strategy that includes the job training and support element, not just the recruitment of business into the community. And so long as the understanding is elastic enough um, to include the training piece as a potential uh, element of investment from, uh, from this group, then I'm, I'm fine with that. But I don't see this as uh, exclusively how you dangle money out there and recruit a company in or put money out there to help grow something that exists. I think that's part of it. But the other, and, and as important part, is if you recruit those businesses here, you got to have the talent, mm -hmm. you know, to flow into it. And career source, at least, is one of those uh, workforce training. Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank staff because I know that at the at the last meeting, I really wanted to see 
more people from the arts community and more people from um, the, the who are actual small business owners on the group and you've added those so I think that's a really great thing. Um, I had also wanted to see somebody from the green business industry, uh, either not necessarily a sustainable Tallahassee rep, but a person who is a business owner, maybe involved with that group, who is involved in that emerging, tech, you know, that's an emerging, emerging industry sector. And uh, so if we're opening this up to adding people, then I'm gonna bring that up again. Uh, really, I agree with Commissioner Deloge that we're good here, but I really do support the idea of coming back for a review next year at that point and seeing how this group's functioning. Um, so that's where I am with that, but I just want to get that out there. The, um, the, my, and I, now finally I wanted to clarify something. My understanding, we had talked about confidentiality earlier today, but my understanding is that the larger group is not going to be vetting new industries. Their main, I, main purpose is to really um, innovate and try to think of new business strategies and so on. So if I'm wrong about that, could you correct me? Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> as it were, uh, fortune favors the bold. I'm uh, dealing with a separate issue. The last component that you wanted me to confirm, I'm happy to <laughs> confirm. Can you repeat yeah, it? Yeah, I, I, I was listening to everything, I assure you. Just, I, I did miss the last part. Um, I wanted, it was my impression yes. that the larger group, and, and I referenced this back to our conversation about um, confidentiality and the need for it. Yes. Uh, the larger group isn't really going to be vetting businesses and deciding on deciding on spending money on cer bringing certain industries here. That they aren't part of that conversation. That they're uh, they're really all about talking strategies and um, how yes. do we do how do we set up the jobs yes. um, development program? How do we how do we how do we what do our small businesses need, et cetera? And so I wanted you to correct me oh, if I was oh, incorrect. About you're that. not incorrect. My apologies for making you have to restate that. Um, absolutely, and, and to the, if it, if it pleases the chair, uh, to the mayor's point, the initial taskings of each of these are laid out in the resolutions themselves. We do understand that there will be some refinements and strengthening for each of the missions of these groups as they stand up. I would like to clarify and emphasize our opportunity once this IA acts is to engage them immediately. Um, so that will be happening during the summer months. And uh, you're absolutely correct. The larger group is really focusing on how can we be the most competitive as a community, uh, not getting down into the weeds on, on uh, funding matters. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, we have Commissioner Dozier and Commissioner Ziffer next. No, Commissioner Ziffer withdraws. Okay, Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate the discussion and I want to make a couple of comments, but I, I would suggest adding to the motion, if the maker of the motion were um, willing, not just to review the attendance, I, th I think that's where you were focused, Commissioner Deloge, no, but this is, this is a committee structure that was conceived before this organization began. So as we move through and we collect more data and we've heard a great report from our staff about the work that they've accomplished in the last year, this is a rather large group that's meeting and yes, and we understand and, and in the item it says encourage knowledge and collaboration. That seems like what OEV does and what we're all trying to do no matter what. So I would love after the first year to have a discussion about is this the right approach? Is this committee structure the right approach? Hear a report on what happened at those meetings um, and the task force and other things like that. I think that that, and that would give us an opportunity to hear from staff any suggestions about tweaking since this is in the intergovernmental agreement, everything like that. Um, it may be important to move forward, but I do, I do think it's in our interest in these first few years to do kind of a gut check every now and, and then. I, and, I'm, and I'm fine with that in, in concept. My only concern is I don't want to commit to, we're going to open this up and start re -shape. In other words, if we, we can do that as a body. If we, the report comes back and says, this group has just been completely unable to get through because of these three reasons, then we can basically change. There's nothing we can't unwind, but I, would, I don't want to 
I don't want to put it on the schedule, right. but we're going to break this up and start all over, I guess, if you follow me. But I, I hear what you're Come saying. Come I'm sorry. I, and I understand that. Um, and I wanted to say that up front because I think that review is important, and I'm going to guess that this list as it stands is approved by the majority today, and I'm not sure I can get there. So I, I would love for that to be included. Um, I, and the only reason why I say that is, again, this um, was conceived very early, and I want to say the staff work to put these, this group together is incredible. Um, the commitment and others, you know, I've talked to people who have been contacted by staff. They're very excited about this. I think we need to move forward. But um, there is, I have heard a lot of comments from the various business associations. We've heard several of them speak today. Um, there are other groups, All Saints, others, um, and then in the out, you know, outer areas of mm -hmm. the city limits um, and county. There are industry, industry groups that have been um, mentioned. There may be other um, areas, for example, creative economy or entrepreneurs. The organizations are phenomenal. Um, the three listed under entrepreneurs, those organizations are great. My read on this, there may be one or two startup businesses or businesses in their first three to five years on this list. So again, I. I'm, I'm going to, I want to hear the other comments, see where we are with this. Um, I think it should move forward, but I would love to hear anyone else's reflections on this because I'm, I'm mm -hmm. questioning what this group is going to get into and the discussion. And I, th I guess I will conclude with this, that this review that, and I appreciate the making the motion, uh, Commissioner Billows, you accepting this. I wonder if um, it's not going to be more effective if we focus long term on industry sectors based on the report that you all are conducting now, Ben. Um, workforce areas, as the <coughs> mayor said, um, a, bi a, a group of business associations, something like that. And actually, I did have one question. Are these groups under sunshine? Um, as someone mentioned that these would be public. I think Commissioner Zipper did. So they are under sunshine. Yeah, these are advisory. They're under sunshine as, a, as advisory committees. Okay, I, I thought that was the case. So we are putting a large group of people together talking about very broad economic development issues and how to move forward with those issues. And they all work with each other in other organizations and they're not, they're going to be prevented from talking about these things that come up on their agenda, which could be very general economic development issues outside of a public meeting. At least that's how I would understand the sunshine rules. So that that is another reason why I'm, I'm starting to wonder about more of a task force model or something like that as kind of ad hoc groups. Right. Again, I would love to hear other thoughts or Ben, if you have any thoughts on the sunshine issue, I'd, I'd love, to, I didn't ask you that one in briefing because um, it occurred to me after Commissioner Zipper I, I would assume that these committees also would be briefed on their responsibilities under the Sunshine Law as they... Are they spending public I am, dollars? I am. I Christina, think so what are they on the Sunshine Law? Miller addressed that to uh, the comment earlier. They're not expending the $90 million or anything like that. I just wonder if we're going to put two people who are working on a project um, with the Chamber or on the Chamber Board or Innovation Park Board or somebody like that in a position where they're talking about to use your word earlier, Commissioner Maddox, uh, the philosophical, how do we increase collaboration in this community and then prevent them from having those discussions in another area or run the risk of breaking sunshine. It just, I'm not sure, um, I, I think others have raised some important questions here. And Ms. Paredes has a comment on that, I think, if you'd like to try to answer that. You raise a really good question, Commissioner, and one that we asked ourselves when we were looking at these committees. The um, competitive, project cabinet um, that one will be governed by sunshine their meetings will be noticed they will not allow to be talked to each other since you know sometimes confidential projects so they'll there'll be issues with that as, or conversations along that line. The one of seven, that'll also be governed by Sunshine and publicly noticed. The one of 33, that will be publicly noticed, but they'll be allowed to talk to each other. They're an informational gathering body and one that we use to discuss issues and not a decision-making or advisory body. So that covers um, that issue that you brought up, which is an excellent question. Christina, thank you. You're welcome. Madam Chair, that is a critical issue with this. And again, Commissioner 
Senator Ziffer brought this to mind, and that just presents all kinds of uh, different problems. So I'm very glad, and I think that needs to be, mm -hmm. and this goes to Curtis's question earlier, that they're not spending any of this money. They are um, just it, kind of a work group. Um, it, it, and one that we will report on our progress to and share information for, and their main goal is to look at how we can make our, our, our entire region more competitive as we move together, to give us that extra competitive advantage. We're creating champions in, um, in these 33 individuals to help us accomplish our work. And one of the first things that we'll do with each one of these committees when they first meet is do an organizational overview that'll, that'll clearly delineate the responsibilities where they need to adhere to Florida statute and what their charge is as um, as body that's fantastic thank you um, commissioner sorry I, i'm mm -hmm. sorry madam chair I, with that clarification mm -hmm. if the um if the review happens in a year and i do think consideration of other business associations at that time i could support moving forward for a year but i think we do need to do that review so i appreciate that commissioner okay. deluge thank you all right we have uh, two other speakers commissioner ziffer and commissioner proctor i just wanted to make a a quick comment because I had some correspondence with someone that was speaking about the lack of neighborhood representation and um, um, individual market areas and you know I'm looking down the list and all these people live in neighborhoods a lot of them live in different neighborhoods um, a lot of them they not own down businesses. in my neighborhood well, I, I might all right what carry on but my, my point is you know, if they're all coming onto this and they're going to singularly represent the organization that they are part of, well, then we have a problem. But I don't think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to try to break out of their silos and look at what's best for our community. And they all have different things that they can bring to the table and experiences and where they live and where they frequent and where they shop and where they spend their money. And so I have great confidence that actually it's a fairly good group. Can it get better? Probably. But we won't know that until some time has passed. Commissioner Proctor. Madam Chair, I offer a substitute motion that in addition to the names that have been uh, presented to us, I'm sorry, the organizations presented to us for economic vitality competitiveness committee would include Kona, uh, NEBA, and the downtown business uh, group, which the gentleman spoke to earlier. Okay, motion, substitute motion has been made to add Kona, NEBA, and the downtown improvement authority. Is that? Yes, ma'am. The one you're talking business about? Association. Downtown business. business association. Okay. Second. Yeah, okay. Here is second to the motion by Commissioner Scott Maddox. Now I'd like to speak to the motion if possible. Please do. Um, members, I anticipated that staff would have made for us a model uh, to say that these resolutions, we would have X, Y, membership, this, this, and that. And I teach constitutional law. And when you come up with a framework to say that there are going to be two senators per state, so many representatives for state, the executive branch, but but nobody came out of Philadelphia and said that the following will also be the names and the representatives they're going to serve. Our staff should have given us a model, but they didn't have to give us the names of who was going to be serving on these things. I think that's our job. Um, we should not defer uh, and delegate to our staff to give us more than the model, but the name should have come from this body. NEBA is a respected organization. Uh, it's older than the OEV, which is an infant. It has outlasted the EDC, and they have uh, probably collectively more gravitas about business than any organization in this community. In many ways, it represents old school Tallahassee and that's not to say the old school is supposed to control the future, but it is the future in which uh, our community, the old school in which our community's future will be based. And we can't ignore that. And there seems to be some angst, uh, some opposition to NEBA. And I don't know what staff's problem is to excluding them. They are a group that have um, stood up to the county commission when they don't like something, as they should. They are a group that will hold to task the city commission when they don't like something, as they should. We barely got an organization around here with a real spine in their backs, but NEBA does. This is an organization 
that don't like me. I could never win a straw poll out there, but it don't matter. I won six elections without their straw ballot. I respect them. They don't like me, but they have earned the right to be at the table here. Uh, Kona should be at this table. All of this, these ideas, of what we say in this sheet of paper that was introduced to us up here, I, I thought we were serious about it, that we were trying to include uh, new people's voices. We were trying to keep people who would stir the pot and keep things going. I saw that in here somewhere, but that's not what we're doing. There's no basis who which, I mean, even Jesus saved the world with only 12 disciples. All we're trying to do is a little economic development here with 33 people for Tallahassee. So we can add three more people and it doesn't take away. We're a very illustrious community. We have, I heard somebody say we were the 12th most educated community. Let this education come together. We went up to this place in um, Nashville and they said that the idea was to put everybody in the room and just clash, you know, bang heads, come up with the best ideas. You don't want the chief headbanger of this community, Neva, to not be in that room. I mean, they just got hard heads and can bang with the best of them. All right. That's why they need to be in this room if we're clashing. And you know, um, uh, understanding and vision is something you have to grapple for. And I like the way that Neva grapples. All and right. I'm suggesting the motion, you didn't cut nobody else off, Madam Chair. I listen patiently. And I'm suggesting to us that we embrace a qualitative group of people, citizens. Uh, they don't like me, but they're still a qualitative group of people who may have great ideas to offer. And that's why I provided this substitute motion, that we would be a body that right. starts off inclusive and not exclusive. And we, so we have a substitute motion on the floor, duly seconded to include Kona, Neva, and the Downtown Business Association to our 33-member uh, competitiveness committee. Further discussion? All in favor of the substitute motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And you have, let's take a voice vote. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they opposed? Okay, the motion passes. I'm in favor of it as well, and the motion passes eight to two. I'm for it. Pardon me? I'm for it. You're for it? Nine to one. Madam okay. Chair. I'll Thank you very much. Vote. Thanks. Vote. Pardon me? Commissioner Miller? I'm going to add to the vote. Thank you. Oh, did you call my name? Thank you very much. Um, yes. I just wanted to say one thing. Um, I'm convinced and moved by Commissioner Proctor's argument about the credentials of the organization. But other than that, taking away a specific organization's name, having a representative on every single stage of Blueprint, I get concerned about the replication. There are two in particular. I, I believe that we have the Big Bend Chamber on the Citizens Advisory Committee, and then they are also on this committee. And then we have NEBA on the Big Bend Chamber. I, I mean, we have NEBA on the Citizens Advisory Committee, and then we have them on here. And there are a lot of other organizations in the world who in our city that aren't even represented at all. So how much of this, the, my issue is not the organization, my issue is the repetition and the amount of influence a given organization has in this blueprint process. Now granted, as far as I can see, it's pretty much a, a solution searching for a problem, so, and I'll admit that. So let's just go forward, but in the future, when we talk about adding, uh, just repeating other citizens committees that we have in place right next door in the next room, uh, you know, how much of that do we really want to do? Oh, excuse me, Commissioner Nick Maddox? Yeah, point of clarification. So the, the motion that passed was Commissioner Proctor's motion. So Commissioner Delosier's motion, along with the amendments made by Commissioner Dozier, are not a part of the uh, original motion, for, I mean, Commissioner Proctor's motion, correct? The substitute motion passed. We still have, we have two options uh, that we need to speak to. Uh, and, pardon me? Oh, okay, the substitute will take the Substitute, okay, we'll, take we'll take the place of uh, Commissioner Do Commissioner option Dozier. one. Yeah. Okay, thank which you. is uh, the enabling resolution for those three committees. And I do, in journalism, we called it the tickler file, and I hear such anxiety here that 
uh, in one year when Commissioner Richardson takes over, we really should, I think, have a report on how this is all going from the staff and just make that duly noted as a official part of our request to staff. Madam Chair, we look forward to hitting the ground running with this group. We thank you for the direction and we'll be pleased to report on progress uh, with these committees in a year's time. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Proctor. Madam Chair, when, um, when uh, Commissioner Zilfer said about the um, diversity of the group and blah, blah, uh, I do have a problem with, um, and, and I, I respect highly, I don't want to get in and say the wrong thing, but when Sean Pittman substitutes to serve for the um, Big Ben Chamber and Audra Pittman is on here to represent um, something else, I, when Mr. and Mrs., that's what I'm talking about. Um, I think that, that that's problematic to me, and it condenses the locale, the thinking of, um, of this group reflective of one part of the community. I think there should be greater diversity. There should be an effort for geographic diversity, and I oppose and object to both Pittman serving uh, simultaneously on this board. I have a question. Oh, okay. Commissioner Ziffer. I just want to make sure that the motion for those three new slots was for the Economic Vitality Competitiveness Committee, correct? Right. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Commissioner Maddox. Madam Chair, since we have the rest of the business to take up, I was going to go ahead and make a, I think it's, it's in. We need a motion on option, option one uh, as a substitute motion and option two. Um, no, I thought option one just passed. I mean, co Commissioner well, Proctor spoke to option did, one. Yes. Right. So it would be option two with the amendments that Commissioner Dozier placed on Commissioner Deloge's uh, original motion that included the review as a part of my motion as well. So I make the motion for option two with the review that Commissioner Dozier asked to come back in one year. Second. Now, my, what my motion Second. did was to add additional members to the Economic Vitality Competitive yeah. Committee. That's no, what no, if I, I, I did. That's yeah, all. Madam Chair, if, if I, I may. Mean, two are still open. I, I think that the maker of the original motion included the comments in the uh, coming back that uh, Commissioner Dozier had added. As I understood your motion back when you made it, it was, okay, take that package and add the three names on the right. Competitiveness Committee. Yeah. And I believe that that was approved at the vote that you just held. Right. But, but I, I am still stagnant with our having two Pittmans on the board. I think that we have to diversify and not two. condense and have two members from the same household. Is that what we really, I mean, if that's what we want to do, let's just be say that's what we want to do. They both are quite talented, very talented, honestly. But Mr. Mr. Madam Chair, yes, are you looking for option one and two or are you looking for option two? Pardon me? I believe it's, I it's believe done. the option's done. Yeah, I think we're on okay. to the next item. Well, we haven't voted on both of them, have we? I think oh, the think substitute the motion substitution. included. Substi included. I, but I didn't I understand the substitute motion to include the it. names that were actually a part of option one. I um, understand. I, I, my motion was to make a recommendation. Right. And I think the understanding is he just added two. Basically. Yours was he staff added. recommendation for one and two. So, okay, we're good. Okay. If you take one and two, which includes the names, we've got three new entities that don't have names yet. Okay. Because you didn't name names, you named entities. And everything else, I think, passed. Um, since staff has named all the other names, can I name at least three of them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get to add a name. Okay, staff has all this power. Uh, okay. One, point, one point of clarification. Yes, ma'am. As we move on, okay, so each of these organizations submitted names and staff solicited others. I know um, a lot of folks mentioned to me that, um, Al, you had reached out to them personally and were appreciative of that. Just for clarification, Ben, the city and county both approved the interlocal agreement mm -hmm that structure these committees and within that we added 10 seats so to I mean, the I competitiveness committee personally. so that IA would have to be amended yet again I don't vote, I don't or? think so okay. I think I think the resolution which you just Fantastic. approved provides that kind of flexibility to be nimble um, and I, I think we're in good standing with the, the motion you've made. I wanted to make sure because you want to hit the ground running yes, and get these people together I didn't want city or county agendas to hold that up so thank sure. you. All right, we are on to, oh, 
Mr. Hurd, I just wanted to make a comment on Commissioners, this. it's our understanding that several of the, at least the city commissioners, are having trouble with the board docks loading several of the items, uh, in particular items 10 and 11, I believe. Uh, we have hard copies that um, the staff will hand out to you. They don't have the attachments, but uh, we also emailed a link from the Blueprint site so you can go get those. We apologize for the inconvenience and understand that that's problematic. Thank you. All right, we're up to item number 10, which is a Magnolia Drive multi-use trail project. Yes, Madam Chair, this item requests Blueprint uh, IA board approval and adoption of a resolution right. authorizing the Blueprint attorney to exercise board's eminent domain authority. I know that uh, our attorney is here available to make a brief presentation. I do believe that Second. there's- Second. Uh, Motion's been made and seconded to approve uh, option one. Wh which side of the street then on these maps are y'all going? Are you all on the east side of, of the road, or on the west side of the road? And then uh, is, is there not a new phase? I thought there were only two phases initially, and we've broken this down from Pontiac to uh, uh, down there to Diamond Street, um, all the way up to uh, uh, that other street. We got three segments now. Didn't we initially say we we're gonna do this in two? Uh, Commissioner, I believe we had a grand total of seven, seven being the signalization at um, uh, uh, Jim Lee. Uh, so there, there are multiple segments. Um, and this is the that particular one, which uh, it's my understanding that they're ready to go to construction. And uh, if we don't uh, take this action, then it will delay our ability to move forward with construction. What side of the street it's is the eminent domain coming? Commissioner Proctor, it's on the east side. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded, but I understand we have to read the resolution into the, are you sure? It's like, <laughs> it's quite long. You do not have to read the entire resolution into the record. I advised uh, Mr. Hargraves that we only needed to read the title and the highlighted portion, which is just a paragraph. So I'll try to do that as quickly as possible. Resolution number 2017-01, parcel 700, acquisition of a temporary construction easement required for the construction of a portion of the Magnolia Drive multi-use trail phase two project. A resolution authorizing Leon County, City of Tallahassee Blueprint Intergovernmental Agency recognizing and establishing that a valid public purpose is served by the improvement construction and operation of certain property within the city of Tallahassee and Leon County, Florida, concerning a portion of the Magnolia Drive multi-use trail project phase two, located generally from Pontiac Drive to Chalkeban Nini, to be constructed in two sub phases, the project and determining that the property is necessary for the implementation of the project and authors, authorizing blueprint and its agents and designees to acquire the necessary property by gift, donation, purchase, or the exercise of an eminent domain proceedings. Well done, thank you. All right, we have a motion that's been seconded to adopt uh, this resolution. Do I hear uh, all in favor please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes with uh, nine to zero with uh, Mayor Gillum out of the room. Ma Madam, Madam, Madam Chair, I'd just like to compliment staff on the first phase. It's an excellent uh, project. Um, not sure if you, you all have traveled in that direction. Um, it, it, it lived up to its billing. And uh, if the next phase comes close to what the first segment has been, this roadway is, is an excellent um, improvement for um, a sidewalk that's 10 feet wide and has done a, a whole lot to transform uh, that area. I appreciate it, thank you. All right, it's great. Commissioner, we'll make sure that we share that with our partners at the county that took the lead on, on the design and construction of that segment, but we do appreciate the comment, thank you. <laughs> All right, next up we're in item number 11, and I think we have several speakers lined up for that. We do. We do have a brief staff presentation I think will help uh, sort of frame where we've been and uh, <laughs> some of the key components that are before you today, if you, if you, uh, if you would like, Madam Chair. Uh, this is bringing back, of course, the prioritization uh, process that remains. We'll give you an overview of all the good prioritization work you've done thus far, and then there's some additional information on uh, wastewater treatment. Uh, Defer to Autumn Calder. 
Okay, all right, great. It. And I know, uh, as Charles mentioned, that there are some issues with downloading the agenda item. I have extra copies here. Does anybody need a copy? And there are more copies on the table in the back if anybody from the audience needs one. Okay, all right. Um, so thank you guys for letting me present this today. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the next round of sales tax projects. And uh, these next slides really focus on um, a response to, that we got from you guys last February. Um, most uh, immediately, we'll talk about the, the reevaluation of the criteria for prioritizing the connectivity, community enhancement, and quality of life projects. We shorten that to CCQ projects. Uh, and then we'll talk about how to move forward the first phase of the alternative sewer solution study. And then lastly, examine if there's a relationship between the alternative sewer solution study and the larger $85 million water quality project that will be implemented by the city and county. Mm -hmm. uh, so this presentation takes us through those three um, requests and starts with the um, prioritization of the CCQ projects. So how, how did we get to where we are today? Um, well, between 2012 and 2014, there was a citizen-led committee that developed a slate of projects to be funded by the 2020 to 2040 um, sales tax revenues. In 2014, the referendum to extend the sales tax passed, and the Intergovernmental Agency Board approved Blueprint's 27 infrastructure projects. In 2015, the IA took significant action to identify um, six projects to be funded through an annual allocation. Um, Capital Circle Southwest was the number one priority project, and that left 20 projects to be prioritized. In 2016, three more projects moved forward due to significant leveraging opportunities. The city of Tallahassee completed the DeSoto Winter Encampment. We had our six annuals, Capital Circle, which left 16 projects to be prioritized at the end of 2016. So we came into 2017 with 16 projects to prioritize, and earlier this year in February, the IA approved a strategy for the remaining five large-scale transportation projects. This strategy aligns Blueprint with the CRTPA, our Capital Region Transportation Planning Agency, and sends a very clear and consistent message to the DOT on our local priorities, which gives us the best chance for leveraging our sales tax revenues and bringing in as much state and federal dollars as possible. Let's see, we had our three that had moved forward in 2015. The SOTO was completed, the six annuals, Capital Circle's number one. So that leaves 11 community enhancement, quality of life, um, and connectivity projects to prioritize, which is what we're focusing on with this strategy today. So these are the 11 CCQ projects um, presented in alphabetical order. Uh, the cost estimates range from one and a half million to 22 million. And these 11 represent 15% of the total cost estimates for all 27 infrastructure projects, just to give you an idea of the scale. This is the ballot language that was presented to the voters in 2014. And essentially, it's the promise that was made to the voters on what this extra penny could pay for. We believe that there's merit in using these, um, this ballot language as the basis for the prioritization criteria. And those elements are um, improving our roads and our traffic congestion, protecting our water quality and reducing flooding, expanding our parks and open spaces, and lastly, investing in economic development. Here's the blueprint promise criteria that we're proposing today. Um, it's based on five categories, all of equal weight. Using the IA's guidance from the February meeting, we believe that these 11 CCQ uh, criteria represent our promise to the community. Starting with project readiness, which is basically, is there an adopted plan or design that's already in place? Um, if authorized today, could this project move forward? Water quality, does the project go above and beyond typical stormwater requirements, or does it develop a plan that mitigates a pre-existing condition? Transportation, does it hit all the categories that we're looking for, from using our own two feet, riding a bicycle, taking transit, or, or going from place to place in our cars? Expanding parks and open space, does it create a new space or enhance an existing? And then finally, investing in economic development. And here's where we present something a little bit new, which is utilizing a third party that Florida State University Center for Economic Forecasting 
and analysis to do an economic impact analysis of each of the 11 CCQ projects. So if approved today, we'll run the 11 through that criteria and then present those draft results in the September meeting. But I'd like to just keep in mind a couple considerations. One is once we get those draft results, we'll try to present them graphically so you can see how they will be invested in our community geographically. And then also starting today and all the way through 2039, if there's a significant leveraging opportunity, it might advance one of those projects forward um, above another. So the way that we're proposing to handle this agenda item is to um, ask for your approval of action items A and B uh, before we discuss C. Um, action item A is to approve the promise criteria, and then B is advance funding the Center for Economic Forecasting Analysis Study, um, which would be in an amount not to exceed 19,000. Madam, at attachment three has been given to us from Dr. McGlynn. What are we to do with it and why is it left hanging? Is there a recommendation on Dr. McGlynn's letter? That um, is part of action item C. Action C. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, great, so, thanks for asking. So the first two, uh, action item uh, A is adding the uh, project readiness and uh, also the uh, having the third party uh, evaluation from the Center of Economic Forecasting and Analysis. Those are the new, th new pieces of that. Mm -hmm. Any conversation on this? Madam Chair. Commissioner um, Dozier. We do have speakers on this, is that right? Mm. We, can, we can go ahead with discussion here or we can go with our speakers. I, um, I just had a point of clarif clarification before we got to the speakers and I'll save other okay, comments. Go ahead. I mean, I only had a couple other comments for later, but because I think this is an issue probably most of us have received emails about um, w wanting one project to be right. top of the list or another, and we may hear that from some of the speakers. I just wanted to clarify um, during the presentation that <coughs> this is approving the criteria. In the next few months, you all would apply that criteria, and um, we'd see that in September. So there, we're not making a decision today about how we're going to rank these 11 projects. Is that correct? This is proposing a process. A process mm -hmm. right. And related to that, I think two very important points you just made, and a lot of it, and I, I really do like this, and I'll save some of that. I appreciate all the hard work you all put into this before February and since February. Um, with the geographic distribution, with the ability to move projects up the list later on if we leverage other dollars, even if there is a, a a ranking proposed in September, which we accept, that's not set in stone necessarily in the future. And if it was, it may be challenging to move some of those around if we're looking to geographic distribution. I mean, to, to kind of work on projects throughout the city and county. Would that be fair to say? I, I think this process will give us a great step forward in order to give us a game plan to start this program. Okay. In, in terms of fund, looking at funding and over the next five years in particular. Okay, mm -hmm. but there, it's, it's not necessarily set in stone. I think that's what people, mm. they, they want us to make a decision now or in September to rank their project first because they think it's gonna be maybe 10, 15 years. It might be, but there's still a lot of other variables that come into play. Would that, is that correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, as for the speakers, we have seven speakers, and I don't know if are any of these uh, speaking to uh, item a, a or B. I got the feeling most of these are to item C. I think we might have at least two, the Mr. Midtown. Wilson, are you, to item A? Okay, okay, then let's go forward with. Um, and uh, Mr. Quarello as well. Okay, all right. Um, so you want to go first? Bill Wilson coming up first. Thank you. Bill Wilson, 1816 Old Fort Drive. I'm here today wearing the hat as chairman of your affordable housing advisory work group. And at our last meeting, uh, I was asked uh, by unanimous vote of that group to come here today and speak to you about one particular project that is on the uh, on the list of 11. Um, what I'm sharing with you, you, you ask us to look at affordable housing issues and also to take particular note 
of how to implement some new ideas with respect to a particular multifamily housing project. And the project we've selected is the redevelopment of the Orange Avenue apartment complex owned by the Tallahassee Housing Authority. Uh, as you know, they have entered into a contract with um, Columbia Residential out of Atlanta to do the master plan for the Orange Avenue corridor. And by your vote of both commissions on our recommendation, you've also invited um, uh, the other group in Atlanta to join them as well, uh, purpose-built communities. As we look at the Orange Avenue site, one of the issues that, that comes up clearly is this map, which represents the FEMA floodplain in the south part of town. And there's nothing that turns a private developer off from looking at a piece of land and seeing red. And uh, what we have here is, is a lot of red. And over half of the Orange Avenue apartment complex is in the flood zone. Uh, one of your projects is the Orange Avenue placemaking piece, which includes the Star Metro transfer station at Polk, Meridian, and Orange. Uh, the enclosure of the ditch uh, north of Polk Street from Meridian to Monroe, and improvements in a park-like setting at what we affectionately now refer to as Lake Wesson, uh, which is the drainage ditch on the south side of Orange Avenue across from, uh, from Wesson School. All three of those items are included in that one project. And if you look at your criteria, water quality improvement with respect to the ditch and the drainage transportation enhancement in terms of the transfer station, expanded parks, which would be the park area around that, and economic development by getting rid of this floodplain so we can actually build something on the south side, uh, we think it ought to come to the top of the list. We don't know how it might get scored, but out of the all list of projects, you've prioritized a lot of other ones before we got to this point, and, and we suggest this one is one you ought to consider as well. Until this is done, as we understand it from staff, we're not in a position to invite FEMA to come back and reevaluate the floodplain, which we think is actually better than it shows here. Uh, and that in itself is another year to year and a half, two year process. So approval, money, work, FEMA, we're several years out from being able to do anything in terms of major development on the south side. And the sooner you make this decision, uh, the better off we're gonna be. Thank so, you very much. That's thank you. Nice three minute buzz there. All right, next up, uh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Uh, Mary Catherine Lawler. And then Don Coyero. Hi, I'm Mary Catherine Lawler, and I am an insurance agent vice president at Doug Crowley Insurance. I'm also speaking as a homeowner in addition to a businesswoman in town. I live at 3505 Cedar Lane Drive. And I'm speaking today on behalf of several business owners as well in the Market Street area, Dare Bryant Dentistry, Tada Dance Studio Stubbs Music, Premier Gem, Hopkins Eatery, Sage Restaurant, Chicken Salad, Chick, and several others, including homeowners in the area. And just wanted to say that we've been very involved in watching the Market Street District area. We all recognize that it is a supporting economic, self-established, private economic area, and we are in strong support of the work that's being done. It's a water improvement, road improvement, with a proposed park to come. That would be a wonderful incentive, economic incentive, for the current successful businesses, as well as established homes and neighborhoods in the area. We have a group that is ready, willing, knock on doors, host meetings, whatever needs to be done. So I like this criteria, the geographic balancing, the project readiness, expanding parks, the sense of place, all terms that I think make a lot of sense for this particular section of our community. So thank you for your time, I appreciate it. Thanks, Ms. Laura. Uh, next up is Don Coyero. Oh, 
Hello, I'm Don Quarello, 1425 Colonial Drive. I'm here representing the Midtown Merchants Association. And if it's okay, I have a statement that the Merchants Association came up with. Uh, the Midtown Merchants Association would like to thank local government for their continued interest in maintaining and improving the Midtown area. What once started as an organic growth spurt more than a decade ago, local government took notice and encouraged new growth by designating Midtown a multimodal transportation district. This 2013 designation called for fewer parking requirements, which allowed for new businesses and new construction to continue to bloom after the initial surge of interest in the Midtown area that took place in the early 2000s. Midtown is a successful example of commercial and residential neighborhoods coexisting to their mutual benefit. This increase of unique and interesting businesses in the area has led to increased popularity of living in Midtown neighborhoods, thus increasing the value of having a Midtown address. Since there is now a major increase in people and businesses in the district, but only a slight increase of parking spaces, safe biking and walking routes are a necessity. Without these improvements, what once was a boon to the growth of the Midtown area could become problematic if patrons and residents do not have enough safe methods to travel to their favorite Midtown businesses. If people want to walk, bike, or park their car and visit more than one business at a time, it is essential that hardscape improvements come sooner rather than later. Uh, the project highlights in the Midtown placemaking plan are just the improvements we as the association are awaiting to encourage the safe walking, biking, and driving in Midtown. Uh, we look at the success of the hardscape improvements on Gain Street, on FAMU Way, and the Cascade Park areas, and would like to see those same positive changes made in the Midtown District. These changes not only encourage safe forms of alternative transportation, but also ensure future growth for businesses and residents as well. We ask this board to continue the efforts and the positive impacts the local government has already shown, and please consider making the Midtown placemaking plan a top priority. Uh, essentially, we're asking, like I'm sure other people uh, are asking their project to be moved up the ladder. For us, it's not only a matter of safety, uh, it's a matter of the businesses that exist and future businesses opening to ensure that people can get to those businesses. And if you left this commission meeting today and took a walk along Cascades, Park Area, or Franklin Boulevard, or FAMU Way, you would find it rather pleasurable. If you took a walk on Monroe Street, north of the intersection of Thomasville Road or Thomasville Road from Monroe Street to 7th Avenue, it might not be as pleasurable. Uh, the sidewalks definitely need improvement. We need more crosswalks to maybe impede the speed of traffic, and uh, we definitely need some bike lanes involved in the whole Midtown area. So thank you for listening. Perfect timing, thank you. Thanks very much. Do we have any other speakers on um, these two items, uh, B, A and B? Do I, yeah. Commissioner Dozier? Um, Madam Chair, if you're ready for a motion yes, I am. on um, A and B, I'll make a motion for A and B. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. And okay. just a, a, a quick uh, question for Ben to see if something might be possible. I, as I said, briefly before when Autumn was making her presentation. I think you all did a great job working on the criteria coming up to February. We had a robust discussion here. Really appreciate you taking a, a deep dive back into it, um, at least from what I heard from you both in briefing, I think, and Charles, that um, you're happy with this evolution as well, that you know you, you feel like you know the economic Thank studies, you. things like that. So Thank I'm you. glad this is something that works for staff and for us. I hope others agree. One question that came to mind while we were hearing some of the speakers, I'm, I'm not sure it's simply about leveraging dollars, but it may be helpful in the future to note um, our partner organizations and other work that's happening there. For example, when Don was talking about Midtown area, there is a study going on at CRTPA right now that is critical for um, whatever future work, and there may be other funding related to that, and I know CRTPA, and I'm thrilled by this, and Blueprint, and everyone is working more closely together than ever, and more efficiently than ever, so I appreciate all of you in the city and county for that. But um, I do think as we move forward into Blueprint 2020, it may help all of us, and particularly the public, to know 
what is happening at other areas, um, studies or funding that in other partner organizations that relate to some of these other projects. Um, because just the work of Blueprint alone isn't going to be the only thing that happens in these different areas, right? And this may be kind of a central place where a lot of that information comes back that impacts the, um, the ranking going forward or the leveraging other dollars. Um, do you think that might be worthwhile or possible um, because you all are sharing so much information these days that we weren't in the past? I think it's fair that as we go about the process of bringing you the, uh, once you approve the, uh, the process by which prioritization would occur, that as we go out and analyze each of these 11 projects in this case, or really any of them, uh, that we do quantify and report back and, and involve in that, in that um, review process uh, any kind of project readiness, any kind of other um, you know, collaborative partnerships or funding uh, partnerships that may exist. So uh, your point's well received by, by staff, I believe. Okay, uh, Curtis Richardson. Thank, thank you, thank Madam you. Chair. I, and, and Ben and I talked about this during my briefing as well. I, I certainly would want us to have some flexibility um, and to be able to move projects as we see necessary because this speaks to what I talked about earlier uh, in terms of uh, government having a role uh, in uh, uh, incentivizing economic development through addressing infrastructure issues. Uh, if many of the projects that Bill talked about are in a floodplain, then certainly uh, we don't have an opportunity for economic development in that area. Uh, so we might want to look at a project um, uh, and, and put it high on the priority list uh, in order to address not only the infrastructure needs, but the the uh, economic development uh, that that would bring about, as we've seen in Gain Street, as we've seen in Midtown and, and other parts of this community, uh, when government uh, improved the infrastructure, private development uh, was willing to come in and make investments. Uh, and so I would certainly want, to, want us to have that kind of flexibility. Uh, this project may not score high based on our scoring criteria, but certainly it is critical to economic development on the south side of town. And so uh, for that reason, I'd like to see us have not stick rigidly uh, to the criteria, but have some flexibility going forward uh, so that if a project for whatever reason doesn't score high, this board can still consider it for, uh, for funding uh, early in the process. Thank you. Comment. All right, uh, motions uh, Com to- Comment, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, Commissioner I want to um, just say that it's very important what Commissioner Richardson is, is um, that we vibe in wavelength with him in that issue because it, it sets the foundation for uh, our recognizing that we are, according to Harvard, a uh, little rinky-dink, little university up the street, um, said that we are the most economically segregated community uh, in America. And I think that our projects, and I'm not an economist and don't understand how you, but we should have some measure that is attuned to and desirous of um, correcting and bridging that gap and focus on um, an enhanced equality of uh, all of our community. And that is not a measure uh, that's proposed as one of our prioritization criteria. I think that with this piece of money, we have an opportunity to come up off the bottom, I'm sorry, off the top of the list uh, in our economic segregation. And if we can do that, uh, there needs to be a variable that's sensitive to and cognizant of um, what we're trying to close that gap. Um, uh, did I say that well enough? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Thank you. That's it, all right, thank you. We have a motion made and seconded for items A and B. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries 10 to zero. Thank you, Madam Chair. If we're gonna follow this uh, format, Autumn will conclude her presentation and I know we have speaker cards. Have oh, okay. Go ahead, thank you. 
so this is the second part of our presentation, which is a discussion of the first phase of the alternative sewer solution study. This subcomponent is estimated to cost no more than 500000 and we're proposing to advance fund it with unencumbered funds in an inactive Blueprint 2000 project, and then we would pay the Blueprint 2000 program back once sales tax revenues are received. Um, I'll tell a little bit more about the project itself, but let's see. So, Madam Chair, they're trying to get us to spend some money on a, another study. We don't spend money down there on studies. Now, if this is not focused toward doing something like some construction, we got studies. So, um, I looked at this letter, and aside from lining some money up in some study people's pockets, what is this going to do to make a project uh, actually evolve and to solve some of the sewer matters that we have there. And those people are designated in the, uh, what we call the wall color basin, and they're still targeted. They have not escaped the legislative eye. And Commissioner Richardson, you know more about that than I, that we would make these people have to get a souped up um, septic tank. And I believe that if we're gonna move on this, that we can't just move with just the study piece going out the head and where's the rest of the body? And I think that there should be a detailed follow through if we're advancing this, let's advance it, but not just drop off a study. It sit on the shelf for another until the 33 people come and duke it out and, 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 and make some recommendations. Well, if I we're gonna advance it, let's advance the whole thing. I think there is some sympathy for that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you a little bit Carry more on. about how the study could potentially meet that, that desire. Uh, this is a technical plan for the unincorporated areas that examines future and existing land uses as well as the environmental conditions. And then it uh, uses that data to represent the best, uh, to rec recommend the best available and uh, reasonable wastewater treatment options, which could include, or any combination of, extending central sewer service, providing sewer alternatives, or alternatives and enhancements to individual on-site treatment and disposal systems. Okay. So this comprehensive wastewater treatment facilities plan, which is the first component of the alternative sewer solutions study, is the first step in an iterative process. The recommendations contained in the report will be fully vetted by the city and the county staff, and then ultimately recommended for approval by the IA. The recommendations will be further refined in the subsequent components, which is the finance plan and the management and operations plan. So when we spend this piece of money, mm -hmm. how much is left that was designated in the, um, the referendum? How much money that was designated in the referendum would be left to actually build and to make uh, a full reality of this idea? Okay, the study itself is funded at 2.8, right? And those are the components of the plan that we're talking about today. Now, how, what, depending on what recommendations are made through that plan, the IA will have the opportunity to discuss, and at that time, they'll be able to discuss options for being able to fund those recommendations. Madam Chair, I just want to go home and just say this piece before I go. I'm <laughs> for all of this, honestly, and I like it as a placeholder, mm -hmm. but for us just to do a study on this area and not identify our next movements and, and get a timetable, um, it can, it's not even redundant. We, I, know, think, I think actually there is some interest in a timetable that some of the speakers may have coming, okay. speaking to exactly to that. Uh, would you like to conclude this yeah, your presentation? Yeah, that'd be great. I've just got two slides. We have four speakers in line. Yeah, there's just two slides, this one okay. and the following one. Um, and this slide addresses the final um, request by the IA in February, which was um, an examination of whether or not there's a tie between the alternative sewer solution study that's funded at 2.8 and the $85 million city county water quality project. When the IA board advanced the $85 million water quality project, there was no corresponding list of projects. Therefore, there's no direct tie between the two projects. In 2015, the IA identified an annual allocation to this project and directed each jurisdiction to manage the projects funded by their share of the water quality funds. 
And the final slide is the um, staff recommendation for action item C, which is to fund the comprehensive wastewater treatment facilities plan at an amount not to exceed $500,000. That's right, thank you. Okay, we have, we have four speakers in line. Uh, Debbie Lightsey, Pamela Hall, Ann Bindlingmeyer, and Curtis Baines. And we'll start off with Commissioner Lightsey. Madam Chair, do we still have a quorum? And if somebody leaves, are we going to lose it? We, we have uh, four. Mayor Dillon is still here. County and three city. Madam Chair, yes, sir. Um, for the sake of, of the quorum that we have, um, I'm, I'm willing to make the motion of staff recommendation unless you want to wait. We have a list of speakers. We have okay. four speakers, but. Uh, Let's let the speakers know that we may lose a quorum any minute, so I didn't call. If we've got the votes, if you'd like to, we have a motion made and seconded for our item. Uh, Madam ma ma Chair, I, I want to hear from C. these speakers, y'all. This All is right. very important to me. Okay, I like to hear Lightsey. from our speakers. Take the, go fast, yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, Debbie Lightsey, 2340 Cypress Cove Drive, Tallahassee, Florida. Good afternoon, I've timed this, it's less than three minutes. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm asking you to affirm staff's recommendation to advance fund the comprehensive wastewater treatment facilities plan, basically an engineering plan, not just another study. We ask you to do the plan now, include all the septic tanks in Leon County because they all contribute to the problem and that the RFP give equal consideration to available uh, nitrate removal technologies and systems. This is what the plan proposes and that's what the staff has recommended. You ask us to go out and get support for this plan and we followed your orders, we've done that. We have 13 community organizations in support of the plan as presented. League of Women Voters, the Bacoa Springs Alliance, the Big Bend Sierra Club, the Leon County Water Resources Committee, the Wakala Springs, the Wakala County Soil and Water Conservation District Board, Friends of Lake Jackson, Leon County Science Advisory Committee, these are both of y'all citizens committees, Sustainable Tallahassee, the Appalachian Audubon Society, the Leon County Soil and Water Conservation District Board, Friends of Wakala Springs, Build Great Communities and Keep It Rural. We also have the support of several business and development folks in the community who served on the Sales Tax Extension Citizens Advisory Committee. They understand that doing this plan is key to protecting our environment, but it will also assist landowners in Leon County who want to be able to develop supported by state-of-the-art wastewater treatment systems. Only if we have this plan in place and implement it can we truly call ourselves a sustainable community and be able to meet the state mandated 2018 timeline for mitigation plans. There's a state mandate out there, we're facing a deadline, we've got to do it now. This is a big step for this community, it's been a long time in coming and we thank you for helping move our community forward. That's as fast as I can talk. Thank you, yeah, we are kind of in danger of losing a quorum, so we want to move really fast or we won't be voting on this today. Pamela Hall, 50512 Valley Road. This is not a study, it is a plan. It's to figure out what technology to put where so that you get the best bang for the buck for your money. So when you go and build something, you actually reduce nitrogen and encourage development where you want development to be. It's not a study, it never was called a study. It's a plan. And I know this because I helped create this from day one. Um, the other thing that's really important, and it's not just about what do we do with the septic tanks that we don't, don't sewer, it's putting sewer and everything else on, on the table so we can really evaluate the best bang for the buck. And to that extent, I would request that you ask the staff who are going to develop this, since most of their expertise are in sewer, and this is a little more complicated than that because it's really trying to get the whole county under a decent uh, wastewater treatment um, system is that they consider using some of the resources we have at hand. The BMAP septic tank committee is full of people who know specifically about these types of things. In specific, there's a, the executive director of the Florida On-Site Wastewater Association. Um, there's a gentleman who's a retired master septic person. Um, plus, there are, there are the public and private um, sewer f people there. So not that they would be required to take their advice, but I think this is a great committee to bring it in front of. And then when they and they meet in August, which means they could go there 
they could get, get it all discussed, bring it back to you in September, and yeah, we could move on and start turning dirt real soon. So it's a plan, not a study, Commissioner Brocker. Thank you. Uh, Ann Bidlingmeyer, next up. <laughs> That's good. I'm Ann Bidlingmeyer, 1920 Harriet Drive. I live in the Lake Jackson Basin, and I have a, a septic tank, and I would like to see uh, action item C implemented as a very, very important um, engineering plan that is going to improve the health of the entire county. So I urge you to adopt action item C, and it is an engineering um, effort. Thank you. Thanks, Ann. Uh, next up, Curtis Baines. Curtis Baines, 1323 East Tennessee Street. I'd first like to assure Commissioner Miller that the best thing my small business could use is $92 million or something like that. If you're, if you're looking for something to do with it, that was your question earlier, what our small businesses need. But what we need to do here is think in term on number item number 11, is think in terms of bigger picture issues and policy. And that policy has to do with how we deal with sewer and sanitation in Leon County. This is not a glamorous kind of activity that you find a great deal of satisfaction by putting a lot of money into, into the politically connected with ec all these economic development programs. This is the basic services and infrastructure that government is designed to provide the citizens. There are large areas in the urban service area that are, that are served by, by septic tanks, which are basically rural waste collection and disposal systems. And they are designed to serve an urban population. And that's what we've got to deal with. Now, this is primarily the county as much as anyone else because the county took it upon themselves a few years ago to become the principal environmental regulator. So at some point, you, particularly in the county, are going to have to deal with these issues. We've got certain areas that, are, that, that, can, be, that can be sewered. They're all in the urban service area, but we have a lot of areas outside the urban service area that sewer will not work well to deal with these issues. And in those, and that's in the primary springs protection zone. Outside the primary protection zone, these are in confined and semi-confined uh, surface soils, but you have the same issue. You're still relying upon rural waste collection and disposal systems to dispose of wastewater in an urban area. And that's what we need to start working on. Perhaps, and perhaps you would hear it here first, is per perhaps what we need to do at some point is to create a, an independent taxing district, a special purpose government that is devoted to dealing with wastewater in Leon County. And perhaps we may need to expand it to include multi-county areas, Gadsden, Jefferson, and Wakulla, as well as Leon. That's something that you know we've ignored for basically 20 years. If we don't do something about it in the next 20 years, where are you going to be? There will be no, probably be no Wakulla Springs in 20 years. But that's a decision you get to make now. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Commissioner Dozier. Just really quick, um, I wanted to compliment staff because, um, and I appreciate Curtis's comments that you know this this is a very big issue. Commissioner Proctor, this is moving the ball forward more than we have in a long time. But when I talked to Pam last week and hearing from Pam and Ann and Debbie often and working hard on these issues, first time ever I heard her say, do not change a thing. <laughs> and that is fantastic Pam from Pam. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, go to the committee, things like that. But on the substance of this, staff, I mean, you all did a great job. I'm thrilled this is moving forward. I think it is getting us to the place you want to be, Commissioner Proctor. And I just, you know, I think that was a great endorsement by someone who pays more attention to these water issues um, as much as anyone else in the community, and Debbie and Pam. And I think she said she's only been working on it 17 years. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, <laughs> just 17 years. <laughs> yeah. 
Lots, of, lots so. and lots of other people are here supporting it, but I, okay. I think that statement goes a long way, so thank you. All right. I'd like to move Mr. the item, Madam Chair. Second. Thank you. Okay, the motion has been made by Commissioner Nick Maddox and seconded by <laughs> Commissioner Ziffer already. Thank All you. those in favor of no. item three and bringing back this report on September 19, I believe, was the instruction to staff, uh, signify by saying yes. We still have a Aye. quorum. Aye. Yeah. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Commissioner, uh, one item remaining under general business, if I may. It's item number 12, status report on Northeast Gateway, Lilani Boulevard and Dove Pond Regional Stormwater Facility Project. Uh, simply, this is bringing forward a, a JPA agreement to expedite the construction of the facility. Uh, this is in accordance with prior IA direction. Uh, I do not believe we have any speakers before we lose quorum. Move to accept the report. Second. Motion's been, yeah, it is a, we need a quorum on that. Motion's been made and second to accept staff recommendation. We All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Me. Opposed, no. Thank you. Opposed, aye, okay, motion carries unanimously, thank you. Madam Chair, can we just thank staff for working on a presentation that we didn't have time thank to get you. to, because <laughs> they do a lot of work Appreciate on this. We yeah. yeah. We read it. it. We love it. <laughs> we adjourn, Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, well, we really Madam Chair, we may, we may lose, we'll lose quorum, but we do have two citizens to be heard. I'm happy oh. to stay. I am, absolutely. Okay, we got through our agenda. Yeah. Mr. Britt, I think. Yes, Mickey Britt. Mickey Britt. Please come forward. You have three minutes, sir. That's it. Yeah, hold out two cards, but it's... Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name is Mickey Britt. I reside at 4407 Millwood Lane, Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, I respectfully ask to have a little bit more time. Uh, Let's go with three minutes and see how we're going. Well, I'm not going to filibuster and everything, but it might take a little bit of time. Anyhow, what I'm going to talk to affects you, your family, your mama, your children, your grandchildren. It's called a national debt. The national debt. How many in here know how much you owe if you had to pay today? Raise your hand. Anybody? Let the record show nobody have a clue how much they owe. Well, it's close to $50,000 for every person in this country. Everybody. If we don't do something about our national debt, we'll be a third world country. Now they talked about going to have interest rates increase. Another day older and deeper in debt is all it's going to create. Now the bottom line is there's only two ways to pay the national debt. One, you're broke can't pay a darn thing. No social security, no welfare, no food stamps, no health care. If you're broke, you can't pay it. So they have to now quit paying everything. Affects your mama, your daddy, your children. People got to pay. So they have to raise taxes out the wazoo. And who pays that? You. Can't do it. So we're now a third world country. Now the other way to handle this, maybe you don't like it, but it's pretty simple. We pay to put people in prison. We call a drug enforcement agency that hadn't committed no crime of no kind. That we say you can't have possession. Whoopie doo, who in the world is in this room and tell me what I can possess? Who in this room can tell me what I can consume? Now, if I go out and consume it and harm somebody, you put my butt in prison. But other than that, stay out of my business and my life. We need to do away with the Gestapo Drug Agency, period. I seen an article on TV. I love this. Coast Guard, $70 billion for this big fine ship. Hmm. Says well, they collected, or not collected, excuse me, caught a boat coming in that had $55 billion worth of cocaine. Well, excuse me, did the government sell that cocaine? They didn't collect $55 billion. Might as well have 55 pounds of, or million pounds, whatever what it was, of sawdust. 
because they couldn't collect nothing. Thank you very much. And we appreciate your coming to the county commission meeting. That going to give me more than three minutes? No, I don't think so. I well, think I got we'll another subject. Yeah. Remember, I signed up. Mama's for, and our papas are waiting for us, right? <laughs> I signed up to have two, 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 two. Uh, I'm sorry. Just make it 30 seconds. Huh? 30 seconds. Let's go. You don't get to speak two times? No. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. I can wait to go back to the county commission. Oh, go back to the county. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it, but we get the message. Thank you. Why did you fill out two forms if you can't speak well, on I two think, subjects? Well, I think you're still just one person. Huh? You're still just one person. Oh, I didn't know that. Leon County Commission, I get to speak twice. We yeah, must have a really lenient <laughs> chairman over there. I'm a hard, I'm a hard nosed gal. Sorry. I think I don't, don't come here to spoil. You know. <laughs> we spoil you over the county. All right. If there's uh, no further business, to conduct the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank you. Good time.